What's up, YouTube? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. My name is Alex, aka Reef Talk, and with me, as always, is Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website, PrestigeReef.co.uk. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am all right. Yes, uh, I managed to avoid trying to do something 10 seconds before we go live so that's cool that's true we did very well today actually <laughs> no very well restrained uh but yeah we're good uh oh and we have a first timer joining us uh long-term fan of you both of you there we go welcome thank you uh carping on with hammy uh hello everybody right we're going to talk about today so i so i'm setting up my new tank of course at some point and so we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to let you guys choose my first fish, kind of. <laughs> oh, I remember playing this game. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. So there's, I, I've got on the Facebook group as well, but there's, um, I've, I've got, because uh, I had, on my last tank, I had a few fish die over the last couple of years. Some were old age. I think most were kind of old age. The clownfish just disappeared for no reason. Don't know what happened with that. And that certainly wasn't old age because I think it was only like five, six years old and they should live to 20, 30 years. But like wrasses were five, six, seven years old. I mentioned before. So actually the numbers had dwindled. And I, I think I've only got 10. You're looking after about 10 of my fish, right? Uh, sure, sure. The 10 of them. <laughs> not like, yeah, not like seven. Yeah, sure, it's not like you've sold the, the white tail coal tank. Um, so I've got, and with the, the new tank will be six feet long and uh so i've got space for more fish and i've got a bigger tank so i've got even more space for more fish so i've got to start thinking about and this is i'm not going to buy them all on day one obviously but i just want to start thinking about what I think fish you I should <laughs> i think you no. should buy them all on day one and quarantine them all in one tank <laughs> yeah and then put them in and never add anything else yeah well that's that, that was the good thing about the the tank before was that because it was kind of stocked and although fish numbers did drop a little drop a drop off a little bit i didn't want to add any more fish because it was like i've got all the fish i need and if i if you add a fish there's a risk and that's yes. i don't mind that when day one you don't mind that risk five years in you do mind that risk but yeah. um but so that's what we're going to talk about today and uh we'll but we'll do the usual um the usual uh, procedure so we're going to start with weekend reefing. Dare I ask, do you want to go first? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go first. <clears throat> okay, I'll go first. Right. Uh, so something very, very bad happened a little while ago for me. Um, I'm sure many of you will remember uh, that the water box got uh, some sort of disease. I'm pretty sure it's Brook, uh, and it wiped everything else. Since then... I have quarantined every single fish that has gone into that tank for 30 days, with the exception of the king eye, which was quarantined for, I think, 16 days. Now, yeah. 14 is how long you need to do it for as a minimum. And he had copper treatment during that time, right? Yeah, all, every single fish has copper treatment. Uh, they have Metroplex and they have freshwater dips. So <clears throat> now, so I also have a UV sterilizer. Uh, which is tuned in for parasite elimination. So it has a very, very low flow. Um, UV sterilizers need to have low flow for parasites and then high flow for bacteria. Um, so I've done that. And about four days ago, even though no fish has been added for a while, the tank, had, had for some reason, has a white spot outbreak. Mm. So <laughs> when you go through that much effort... It is painful. It has cost hundreds of pounds mm. to um, to set up the quarantine. The Metroplex, I think, is like a hundred pounds just for the just for like the pot. So <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do everything absolutely perfectly, mm. and somehow something has slipped through. I don't know how. Um, nothing has died, mm. uh, and I'll be honest with you: most of the fish seem fine. Have, they, have, how many, have they all got white spots? No, or? no. So three of them have it. The Majestic, the King Eye, unfortunately, and the Jewel Tang uh, oh. are the ones that are displaying it. <clears throat> um, I have four cleaner shrimp in there as well. Now, though, don't, they don't eat ick, just so everyone knows, but they do. They are eating things off the fish. And so yeah. obviously fish scratch themselves. Yeah. Now, the cleaner shrimp are giving them like this little massage, you know, instead of them like hitting themselves into rocks. Okay. So... It, um, oh, you've got thing, a cleaner rust as well, haven't you? Uh, not in that tank. Um, okay. but yes, that's that's in quarantine. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> now that tank will not give me an effing break. <laughs> no, yeah, it will not give me a break, basically. Um, I don't, I, I've never experienced anything like this 
<laughs> and I know why people leave the hobby after six months. I absolutely know. <laughs> so, so why did today? did you have velvet to start with? No, I'm pretty sure it's well. Or Brooke, I'm pretty or... sure it's Brook because the, Brooke. this like the 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 like the skin of the fish was like flaking off. Right. Okay. Which is a Brook thing. So you had um, Brook to start with, then a major, the world's biggest dieting outbreak. Yes. Which you did, which both of which you got through, and now. How long uh, did you leave the tank? You left it ages, fellow. Yeah, you? yeah. The tank was empty for, um, well, I don't want to. It was probably at least two months. It was empty. Yeah, okay. Um, I did have inverts in there, but I didn't have um, <coughs> I didn't have uh, any fish in there, and I just you can you can see by how I'm telling this story that it is mentally <laughs> like done me in, yeah. <laughs> because I just think what more can I do? <laughs> like, um, I also wondered to some extent if quarantining fish and putting them through copper actually is also weakening the fish as well. Mm -hmm. Um, look, I'm, Andy, Andy is, is correct. It is a hundred percent treatable with quarantine, but for some reason I got it wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> but the, but the, 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 how there are various degrees of quarantine. You could do that. You could put fish in, in quarantine for a year do tank transfer, tra tank transfer method, chloroquine phosphate, copper treatment, the works, <laughs> and still end up with um, with with something with a problem. There's there's no way of guaranteeing it, um, but uh, there are degrees, and you do a lot more. You do a lot more than I do for a start. I do a, a lot, lot more than, than most people. <laughs> yeah, completely. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> what I've done today is so. But I I asked. I actually asked you to borrow your ozone, didn't I? Just to see yeah, that. Yeah. I thought you were up for the clarity. I was like, oh, cool. no, I wasn't. I was, not, I, was <laughs> I just had, I wasn't willing to tell you what was going on yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, by obviously, I told you just before. Um, so what I did today, uh, was I went to uh, a maidenhead and I bought a new tank. <laughs> so <laughs> I bought a because my original quarantine is uh, 70 liters and I now have bought a 150 liter quarantine tank. Uh, <laughs> the other picture is better than that one. Now, <clears throat> what I have done, as I said in in the uh, in the description of that picture, uh, so I had nowhere to put this tank because mm -hmm. uh, the quarantine tank is on the only other thing that's that's suitable to hold a tank. So I decided to put it on the floor in the bathroom. Um, now, luckily, I am single because if I had a partner, <laughs> that would be a problem. Could you it's... imagine going saying to your wife, "Can I put a tank so big that she can't get into the bathroom? Basically, you can't close the door." Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you mind if I put this in um in in your in your bathroom? Yeah, yeah. Because so, I I have a, a separate bathroom to my partner. Um, so yeah, I put it in that bathroom rather than my own ones. <laughs> um, <laughs> but as I said, when I put it in there, I just laughed myself. I thought, thank God, I'm not seeing anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah. yeah. So the plan is then to well, what is the plan? The, I'm gonna catch. So I will catch the three fish which are most affected first. Um, luckily they're, they're basically, well, uh, they're not afraid of, uh, uh, the fish trap. I put the fish trap in earlier and the fish trap and the fish swam in without any food in it. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not worried at all. I could have caught every single one of those fish already, but I'm just, in, I'm increasing the salinity. So, um, uh, not, I'm put, I've just put salt in, sorry. Not okay. the oh, right. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's literally day one. Are you going to treat all of them or? I will probably, <laughs> Yes. Is the answer that's why I bought a bigger tank. So there's not that many fish. There's like eight, but like four of them are about this big. So, <laughs> so I can put the four small ones in the. Tony's Carl said, "Are oh, you you uh, you are overreacting to Ick?" Tony, I agree with you, but you tell me if you feel the same when you have an angelfish, which yeah. is three thousand pounds. <laughs> so that and I so before we started, I said I, well, I didn't say quite the same, but I said. I started saying, are you not just tempted to leave it? And then I realized that about the king eye and you said, yeah, but what about him? It's like, yeah, okay. So that, you, And it's not like you can just take him out, treat him and put him back. <laughs> it's just no point. You, you, there is, well, to, is there no point? Because Well, there's some point, but you might, <laughs> it, the worst case scenario, you take him out, stress him out, put him back in, cured, and he gets it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the worst case scenario. Um, 
but the best case scenario is I only have to take one fish out. So That's most tanks yeah. will have it in it. <laughs> yeah. In, so your tanks will have it in it. It's just probably yeah. dormant. Yeah. yeah. So I know that for a fact. Actually, I had a well. I don't know that for a fact. I did have a um a Blenny about three years ago that disappeared completely, just disappeared for no reason. <coughs> and I posted a photo of it on Instagram, a macro photo. Yeah. And Marine Depot is that's how long ago Marine Depot yeah, yeah. reposted it. And uh, uh, and then someone commented saying, "Oh, he's got ick." And then yeah. Marine Depot took the photo down. But he, had, when you saw, you could see close up a couple of spots. So yeah, he yeah. had he. I think he brought it in. He died. But yeah. none. I didn't ever. I didn't. That, I posted that photo months after, and I didn't ever notice any other problem with any other fish. So it can just disappear, which is what I would do in in that situation. But I don't have a three gram fish. It, look, I, as I said, I, 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 I've, I'm actually feeling. Um, so Metroplex says on it that it cures cryptocarrion, which is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's true. Um, it, like all the information what is that, that complex? Uh, what, what, is it? what is it? It's an antibiotic, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. It's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it is an antibiotic, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so I on the on the package it says it does. Humble fish who knows everything says it doesn't. <laughs> oh, right, I was doing just <laughs> humble fish, yeah. <laughs> so I or he says it might. It might, um, it might kill the. That, that's it, metronidazole or whatever that, that is. Right. Yes. Okay. Um. So, yeah, humblefish says it doesn't. Although it might kill the free swimming ones, but it has to be at a certain level. However, you can feed it to the fish. So I've tried. I've I've been f oh, um, okay. feeding it to them. You you mix it with a binding the food, and then it gets yeah, in there. Yeah. 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 So, so I've been feeding that to them as well to see if it makes a difference. <clears throat> um. And I even. I, I know this is insane because it doesn't work. I even went to the shop and I bought garlic and I'm dipping their food in garlic. <laughs> but this, this is the thing. When you, when you get that, you tr you want to try anything. I've anything. Had, had the same situation yeah. years ago. Yeah. They are <clears> getting <throat> fed like five or six times a day. The water quality is perfect. Um, they're getting a mixed diet of mysis, pellets and nori. So I'm doing everything, but I've just finally like lost my confidence to go, is this going to get better on its own? Have you looked <laughs> into tank transfer method? Uh, I a long time ago. Popular in the states. I, I've I've never done it, and but it, it was when I when I when I read in when I was when I was quarantining a long time ago. Um, tank transfer method method seemed to be the, the the people who kind of know their stuff with quarantine seem to really rate that. It yeah. takes quite a lot of effort, but it's quite effective, I think. But it's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's a lot of effort, but yeah, look, <coughs> I don't know. All I know is that this tank is fucking cursed. It is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I sometimes you go into something and you think, yeah, I can do this, and you think, and this is this may very well end up being you as well. You like yeah. it may very well end up. Be, just prepare yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, because. I said to the guy at the fish shop, who's a friend of mine, I said to him, I'm so glad that I have um, I have the coral farm because otherwise people would think I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas obviously I do know what I'm doing. It's just sometimes this hobby just kicks your ass. Well, you've even quarantined. <laughs> you yeah, do a and, lot I, more and I've got a UV. Yeah, yeah. So yeah someone just yeah. said, get yeah, a UV, they're amazing. So yeah. as I said, it's not bad. I just don't, I've don't want it to get worse and that's it. So, yeah. and any other small thing, um, so I have a, a breeding pair of Bangai cardinal fish, okay. uh, and uh, the male has eggs, and the female turned into an absolute like terror. And right. like, I, I was, I went into the coral farm. I was like, why is there a cov band that's like huddled in the corner, like not looking very happy? Okay. And I'm like, because you know what happened? Like, we're, we're they're quite sensitive, so I'm always yeah. very like high yeah. alert with them. And then I saw it. And it's chasing all, like you're chasing the tangs and everything. So I've taken those. I had to catch those and I put them in a, into a different tank. <coughs> right. The male has so, the male got babies in his mouth. Yeah, he, not oh, anymore. Right. He spat them out. Um, oh really? Yeah. Uh, but to 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 be honest, he needed to spit them out. So he he yeah. has done that several times, um, con consistently, and you can't. He they can't. So in the wild, that doesn't happen. 
No. <laughs> we, we talked about this recently because mine did that and then the male died because he yes. didn't eat for, or he goes, he might eat one week in six months or, you know. Or... Yes. So, um, so I actually wanted him to spit them out if I was honest. But then when, when the eggs were floating around and they had these little eyes, I was like, oh, God. Oh, man, you cruel <laughs> bastard. Because obviously they'd obviously progressed to us. I mean, if they got eyes, that's like not far away from um, from them hatching. Right. Um, so they're in like they're in for they're in the mouth for like a month, aren't they? Or three or four uh, 20, weeks. Twenty twenty three days, I think, is what wow. it is. Yeah. Is, okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's twenty three days. Um, so yeah, that's that's it, basically. Like, so just now that I've lowered the mood. <laughs> Thanks for joining, guys. We'll be back <laughs> next week. Uh, so <laughs> the, the reason I said this to you at the beginning, I could very easily have kept this secret. I could have quarantined them again. Yeah. No one would ever know. But that's not real. And that's why I said to you, I'd rather tell people that I made a mistake because I must have made a mistake. I have to have done. I mean, technically, but I don't think this is your fault. <laughs> the only thing that I do wonder, they say you have to keep the tanks, for, like your the quarantine tank and your main spray tank, far apart i don't know yeah. why you have to keep them far apart but so some things <laughs> can uh, go through the air <laughs> but i think it's i don't I'd, I'd be surprised if it had gone downstairs that's what i mean why, the the corner, tank's upstairs, yeah exactly. right next to the stairs and then downstairs is where is obviously where the tank is i don't know i think but, people say it's got to be i don't know how far it is but i think it's got to be like more than 10 feet away because it can yeah, transfer yeah. through the air but i think I don't know, but who who knows? The trouble is, you can get you can get a disease on anything. You can put a frag plug in uh, with, with a coral on it, and it's on there in the time on stage or whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Literally, I I am losing my love for this hobby. I know. <laughs> it's like one tank can absolutely destroy it for you in one go. <laughs> yeah, because I now have to wait six weeks again. So that well, tank just... has been running for a year now. Yeah, and it's like it's week one still. <laughs> I was about to say you've got a, another option, and actually, I need to tweak this a bit. But you, the other option would be to put all of the fish out, yeah, put them in in their quarantine tank, drain the water box completely, uh, and so you can keep the rock and oh, drain it all the water out. Oh, it's just it's, yeah. Right. What either way, you'd have to leave that fallow for three months. And start again. And to be honest, draining it uh, completely, I don't know if that actually benefits at all. I think it's probably better just to leave. I like, see, I'm not overly worried. As I said, I. <clears throat> it's not like this is my only tank. So it's like mm. it, you go, oh, you know, it hurts because I can't enjoy my hobby. I can't go to the fish or I can't get coral mm. or whatever. So I've got other tanks so I can still enjoy that part. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't mind the fish being in quarantine. Um, it's, it's pretty easy um and you, you feed them and you still see the fish so it's not like that you don't have fish mm. so <clears throat> that's not a problem for me um do you, i'll be honest with you the biggest problem for me is that people expected me to share it with with them mm. on youtube so and i and i can't share any progression because there has been no progression and that's mm. it mm. so and it i it makes me look like i'm an idiot <laughs> that's what it does <laughs> so it, it, well, that's how it feels anyway. Now, our, say, mind, yeah. our minds do this to us. We are our own worst like enemies. Mm. Because chances are not a single person will worry or think about this after this moment. <laughs> you yeah, see what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Whereas because <laughs> it's very visual to me, I think about it all the time. Yeah. The, the, the alternative method I was going to suggest to start with was pull out, pull out all the fish, drain the tank completely and just let it completely dry treat the the king king eye fill it fill the new fill the tank back up again after a month or whatever put it put him back in and get rid of all the other fish but then it's not like you can sell them is it i don't know, I, so, I, I, I don't know. there have been many great idiots in history thank you dan that makes me <laughs> that that makes me feel good <coughs> yeah uh, well, it's, it, it's nothing this is not your fault this is not your fault at all you, mm. <laughs> Is it not? No, it's not. No, don't be. Don't. It's not, of course, it's not your fault because mm -hmm. you, you've right. You you quarantine your fish, right? And you you not only do you quarantine, but you actually treat them. You don't just observe them. Whose fault you, is it? No one's fault. We are responsible for our tanks. That's how I feel, anyway. Right, so. but if, if this is this is not you can you can only do so much. It's not possible to prevent absolutely everything bad from ever happening to your tank because technically, if you put a uh, a coral into your tank and it dies that's your fault 
But what if you've got absolutely <laughs> no clue what killed it? Still your fault. But that's that's a you, you can't look at it. you just you just need a bit of time to heal because <laughs> yeah. this isn't your fault. You've done you've done <laughs> if you weren't doing any quarantine, you had no UV, you were just plop and drop. Yes, then, yeah, know. you know, fair enough. I think you could probably be a bit harsh on yourself. I still think that that would be. I would put that down to okay. I could have done more, but actually, that is bad luck. But given all the extra stuff you've done, there's no way you can say that's your fault. It's in spite of that, and that's just I, this. I literally, it's like it's like I have an open wound, and the, and and the water box keeps picking it. It's what it feels <laughs> like. It just it never lets it heal. Yeah. But so, Philip Harrison summarizes it uh, succinctly and says, "Shit happens." Look, as I said, I don't like. I don't. Th- I'm not saying that. Oh, woe is me or anything. And it might sound like that. I just, as I said, when you go through the amount of effort that I've gone through, it hurts. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. Yeah. And and it, and because before I could I could say, look, I didn't do anything. This like this. Had it coming. Yeah. Yeah, I had it coming. Whereas this time I went, I did everything and it still happened. <laughs> so but to be know. fair, so th- th- you might end up in a situation where a couple of weeks time, it's all gone. There's no problem. Everyone's happy. Quite, yes. Yeah. And as I said, it's more of the fear of what will yeah. happen. Because mm. if that King Eye dies, I can't show my face. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because I was the idiot that spent a load of money on a fish. Oh, yeah, but... That then plenty didn't of people have spent more money than uh, they, so the polo actually refund, to be fair, polo spent plenty of money on fish. And, didn't and when he and when he first set up that tank, he was he, he had a housewarming party or something, didn't he? And the tank wasn't ready, and he knew it wasn't ready, but he said, "I've got to put fish in for this tank." He did it, and then they all died. And I'm not I'm not calling him out and saying that's his fault. I still think that's quite unlucky because he'd yeah. gone through some of the quarantine. But you're not the first person to spend a lot of money on a fish, and that's, for yeah. fish not to make it. As I said, we are our own worst enemy. Um, our minds yeah. are our own worst enemies. So. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I've been in the same position. My first ever tank. Was it my first ever tank? I think so. Got it. Yeah, it was. And um, I actually ended up just leaving it after a week of trying to work out what to do. And everything was fine, actually. But for that or week or two week or whatever it was, God, you feel shit about yourself. I, uh, and just there's, uh, you don't know what to do. It's like, how do I fix this? And especially when you do all the research, you follow all the right steps like you've done, that still doesn't work. But yeah. the reality is that a couple of weeks' time or a month's time, this will all pass and it'll be fine. It's just getting through that. And Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is fish do develop immunity to yeah. it yeah, after, yeah. after having it. Yeah. So once they've got it, <laughs> in theory, they don't. it's not permanent immunity. No, um, they make it. More resilient, more resistant. But they're more them. resilient, yes. And also, once they're in the tank and it's, they're established, and it's like the the stresses, and they're used to the feeding regime and stuff like that. The stresses that cause it are less likely as well. Hmm. So that combined with that immunity means, like I've got I've got a powder blue tang in the um, uh, in the coral farm, spotless, literally yeah. not yeah. a single spot on it. And it's like you never see powder blue tangs like that, do you? Now mm-hmm. there there will definitely be white spots in there, mm. but it's because no none of those fish were ever quarantined, but they've all got some level of basic immunity now, and I haven't had a problem touch wood. Well, in, ter- in terms wood. of re- yeah, <laughs> in terms of recovering, and this is not advice to everybody else. When I had ick in my first tank, mm. I went online. I was that person. I went on the forums, Ultimate Reef, and I was like, God, this is what's happening. I, I was panicking. Because I felt like I had to do something immediately. And I was like, what do I do? I had a load of people really experienced telling me what I should do. I ignored all of it, <laughs> singled out the advice that I thought was most suited to me because I can't remember why, because it was the easiest or because it was, you know, the, the, the thing that I wanted to hear or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I just left it. I've probably fed garlic. I'm sure I did. I put a UV on all that sort of stuff and left it and it was fine. And that's yeah. not because of me. It was in spite of me, actually. But they, but but that they everything was fine, and that tank actually, I transferred that tank over to another tank, and so that system ran for about three years with the same fish in it. Yeah. And I'm not advising you to do the same as I did. You can say I got lucky, but uh, after three years, in three years, that problem never came back. Yeah, that that's. Never saw a spot again. I've I've never had trouble for mm. years and years and years with <laughs> with di- with disease. I don't know if there's something new, not something new, but something going around specifically this last year 
because lots of people seem to be struggling with it. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. more than usual uh, or not. Um, but on the upside, your fish are all doing great. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. So <laughs> they are eating me out of house and home. Yeah, they yeah they're, they're living great. It's like Michelin starred restaurant. Like. <laughs> it is, yeah. I now I now feed fourteen cubes of mice a day. Is that is that up on what you were doing before? Yeah, I was feeding ten, I think, before. Okay. So I'm now feeding fourteen a day. I go through half, you know, those packets. Pack, I go yeah. half every day. But it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um. I can I, I buy packs of like buy the batch of like seventy yeah. of them so I because yeah. I get I get my wholesale cost so it doesn't particularly matter but I just because uh, I'm just like I'm making sure I'm keeping your fish happy <laughs> they're gonna be fatter than when they came when than when they got here yeah well the falco is quite chubby uh, already. that's the only one that I um you don't see so often I, 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 he's, he stays <laughs> under the, under the tray for some reason um but. There was, there was something funny earlier as well, because I walked in there and the scarlet hawkfish was sitting on the zoas. Yeah. And because it was under blue light, it looked quite dark rather than the red yeah, colour. Yeah. Like and I looked at it and I was like, why do those zoas look like there's a big patch missing on them? Yeah. And then I realised it was the hawkfish sitting in them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, They're such yeah. cool fish. Love hawkfish. Yeah. Well, I've got one myself now, haven't I? So... Yeah, yeah. It'll just be another six weeks or so before it can go in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he's he's in he's in quarantine, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's in quarantine. Yeah. <sighs> there you go. I've done the first half an hour. You can do all the talking you want now. Well, <laughs> I I've got all positive stuff, so <laughs> I feel. Oh, Thanks. Tell you what, Bring it on. I know. Well, I tell you what, we'll start with some disgusting stuff. So I I had my my six year old tank when I broke it down. Um. Uh. Obviously, I drained it all completely. But what I did was I drained the, the, the sump and the, the actual tank itself <laughs> completely to, to zero. I put a towel in, mopped up all the, all the water that was left. So there was nothing in there. But the weir box was still full of water. And the reason I left the weir box was because I was, I was thinking, if I unscrew the plumbing, does that mean it, all the water is going to pour out? And I was thinking, I don't think it does. But I wonder if that loosens it and it all comes out. So I was just trying to work out logistically how to do it. I was like, I'll do it next week. That was a mistake. Because <laughs> when I actually got around to doing it, I undid yeah. the plumbing, nothing happened. Because the water, that's not how that's not how it works. Because yeah. it only goes down the top of the pipes. Yeah, and that yeah. was obvious. So I, so I undid the plumbing. <clears throat> and then I got a siphon, put it to the bottom of the weir box and drained, uh, drained the, uh, the, the weir box with the siphon, which is what I should have done on day one. Yeah. And my God, that water absolutely stank it was the most pure form of evil smell i've ever smelled in my life and i pulled out all of the um the the down pipes yeah I this saw is that. what they look like <laughs> <laughs> this is I on instagram there was, some, the there was some really wise guy that's given you a like very good <laughs> advice twice i think so once was with this when you were breaking your tank down i said to you you want to clean this right now because otherwise it's really yeah, hard to clean do you not remember <laughs> No, although to be so cleaning it was easy. It was, just took a bit of elbow grease. So this is the main drain, yeah. and I, I I soaked this in citric acid and then just gave it a bit of a scrub, and that was it. Went from covered in this weird matting filter feeder, or what I don't know what it is, but whatever yeah. it was, and all these little sponges, everything to more or less perfect. So I actually cleaned, it, and all the pipes were the same. Cleaning the pipes was easy, um, but the smell was uh, was quite something special. Nice, but so... there, there were. A couple of other things with that when I broke it down. So you that coral that you said you thought was a chalice, remember that? You were you like, "What's that chalice? It's a really nice one." In my when we were draining the tank, yeah, I tiny don't... little like an inch. Okay, so there, there was a coral that you. Oh thought yes, was yeah, a... no, I do. Yeah, because I thought it was the chalice that I, that I thought was the one I gave you. I think that's I thought... it. Yeah, yeah, you th and which is a night that one is a really nice chalice, which is actually doing really well, by the way. But the, it wasn't. It was a bower banky. <laughs> okay. Uh, before, oh, good sign. <laughs> before at home, you're thinking. Coral farmer doesn't know the difference between a chalice and a bower banky. Yeah, this was the saddest looking bower banky you've ever seen in your life. I bought <laughs> yes. it, I don't know, six months ago, and it. I had a. I don't really know what caused it. I had It was. It suffered in my water box salinity issues. Yeah, but it never recovered, and it went tiny, and the 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 the, the flesh that was remaining was like a centimeter across, if that. It was really. Yeah. It was really small, and it had been like that in my water box for months. Couldn't uh, couldn't fix it. Tried moving it to low light. Got all the parameters back where they should be and all that. 
didn't ha- didn't work. Moved it down to my main tank because I've done that a couple of times with some corals and they've uh, they've done better for whatever reason. Did that. That didn't work either. <laughs> um, and so I just left it and I just thought, you know what? I don't know how I don't know how to fix it. So I've tried the things that I think are obvious. I'm not, I can't. I'll just leave it. Yeah. But after draining that tank completely, the main tank I drained completely and I just left it for like a, 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 well, probably about a week. But I left it for a, a day and I went back and saw that bow banky again. So it wasn't circulating through the sump. The heaters were off and all that. Yeah. The temperature was down to 21 degrees. It looked really good. <laughs> Suddenly it had really puffed up. Yeah. And the only thing I can think is the temperature. Or that rabbit fish was eating it. Fish. That was just, just came to my mind. So there, there are two, but it was interesting that it was doing really well relative. It was still savage, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it could have been the rabbit to be fair. But um and actually, I on just realised so- I put that rabbit fish in with my acans. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have done that, mate. So- <laughs> I, I have some acans at the back. I don't think I like that they're there to grow, so I, they, I don't really yeah. sell them. Um, but I don't, I haven't noticed anything different with them. <laughs> but you, you are right; that was a bad idea. As far as I'm aware, that one didn't ever touch any any corals. Yeah, that one was fine. However, yeah, my one spot fox face. <laughs> started doing this i say started doing this so he was um this is again on instagram for the podcast people uh he's he started chewing on my proper chewing on my scully and this i noticed this i don't know three or four months ago my scullies both of them just started looking sad and it I, and because i had had salinity issues and all this i was like okay it must be that but i sorted all that out everything else uh recovered and they those two didn't and i was like that's so weird what how did that And i've had them for years so it's like, so I know they're healthy and all that. And it's not like there's something burrowing underneath them. So I couldn't work it out. I moved them to the main tank yeah. and they recovered. And I was like, right, okay. Uh, so they're, they're, they must have been the water. There must have been high phosphate or I don't know, something like that. Too much light, whatever. Uh, and then when I moved them back from the main tank to the water box, when I closed the water box down, they, re- they started sulking again. And I was like, why? And it wasn't like they were complete. It wasn't like they were a death, deal, death door, but they were just like half receded and just they didn't were yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so they've yeah. been like that for months, and it turned out it was that it was that uh, the one spot fox face. What There's... um what is the most liked comment on that post out of interest? There's some smug guy I saw some smug dickhead. Yeah, yeah thirty five likes. Guy has had thirty five likes. Yeah. A, a very wise man once told me that fox faces eat coral. For some reason, his name slips my mind at the moment. Who was that? Who was that smug guy? Prestige Reef. Oh yeah, it was me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, true. And Number who, one coral who, farmer in the UK. <laughs> And who who is that wise guy as well? Oh, that was also me. Also, yeah. <laughs> so there, there are two things about they. Firstly, those scullies went in the in the main tank with the rabbit fish that you're now looking after, and yeah. you didn't touch them. Yeah. And I also had uh, things like chalices, a couple of acans, and all that. Yeah. So I think I think you'll be all right. But uh, the other thing with this is, <laughs> so that one spot fox face. I knew you'd say that the second you could, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I told you they're not really safe. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're right, but my position on fox faces hasn't changed, and rabbit fish hasn't changed. I think that I've always said there's a risk, but it's a relatively low risk. And I've had, I think I've had five rabbit fish in the last, and I've been in the hobby for just under ten years. I realised the other day, this September is my ten year anniversary. Anyway, <clears throat> so I've been in the hobby just under ten years. I've had five rabbit fish in that time for several years, yeah. and this is the first time I've had an issue. That I've seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, true. but um, and I've I've had I've had plenty of fleshy acans and that sort of stuff in with him. But as soon as I saw that, I had to catch him. I was like, he's got to go. And actually, when I took him out, I took him back to my local fish shop and got store credit instead. So if you buy a, a fox one spot fox face from uh, Reef, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch out. Um, but uh, it's weird because it was I, I was wondering what else would recover. And there, were, there was one gunny actually that had been kind of shriveled-ish for a while. Yeah. And as soon as he came out, that looked really good for like an hour. And then when I got back from the shop, it was it's again looking as it was, and it's still now looking no better. So I actually don't think it was he was touching that. But there was my trackie is more inflated, so I wonder if he was having an occasional peck at the trackie. But that was always fine. It's just even more fine now, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But that's a, the fleshy kind of meaty coral that they they would go for. Um, and my um, my uh, what's it called the space invader pectinia? Every now and then that went shriveled. Every every now and then, yeah. and it hasn't done since I've taken him out. 
it's been too short to to conclude that was it. But I think there were three or four corals that he was pecking at occasion, and that the the these the scully he was going for. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, didn't he, do that. he wasn't. I'm to be fair, he didn't he, die. <laughs> I know. Yeah, even with that though, he only did that very occasionally. Whereas, like sometimes you can find you get a coral a coral eating sorry a, yeah a coral eating fish, and you leave them for an hour and they demolish it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. even he was I, th- I don't know if it was like the slime or something, but yeah. Anyway. There are lots, right. there are fish which are considered <laughs> reef safe, which are just not reef. There, there are individuals <laughs> in species of fish which are known for being reef safe, which are not. I've had like tangs eat yeah. um uh Say hippo things. I don't know, purples. I've had, purples. I've had oh, issues really? with purples, sail fins, um, regal tangs. I've had fox faces which we which would eat coral. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so usually with the tangs, they are eating, they're like irritating it. They learn if you poke this thing, it push, it pushes slime out and then I can eat that. It's nice. So yeah. they just spend <laughs> yeah. all the time just like pecking yeah. it and eating the yeah. slime. So they're not really eating it. They're just annoying it. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, there have been, I, since having the, the coral farm, it's like my eyes have been opened because there's been so yeah. many things where I'm like, cause you have to try and work out. Like if I had a scully, for example, which wasn't opening, I'm going, well, why is what what's happening with this? So you might have to sit there and watch it for an hour to try to catch that fish eating it, if you see what I mean. Yeah. How did that fish get away with it for so long? <laughs> like, <laughs> and all because obviously when I have clients at the farm as well, this is actually usually when I notice uh, they'll be talking, and then all of a sudden I go, that bastard! <laughs> yeah. I just started eating something. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yes, that, they so- do it. They do it subtly. So I, that had been going on for months, def- at least three or four months. Yeah. And I'd never seen him until this week. Why? How? Like, and then how- suddenly he's like, "Oh yeah, I do this all the time." Didn't you know? <laughs> they, they um, they don't. They're not shy when it comes to eating. I, I wonder if it's because they do it at <laughs> night, because that's when the corals are, are more puffy, and I don't know, and and Maybe. they don't bother. And this time he was just like, "Do you know what? I don't care if it's not really inflated. I want to eat it." <clears throat> I don't know, but it's funny because you never see it, and uh, but then when you when you pull the fish out, it the coral recovers, and you're like, oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> but yeah. I made I made a video, um, I don't know, about four or five years ago that was the top seven reasons your corals are dying, and I think and I think it was a top ten in the end because I listed a few other things, and that video still is valid to this day because you look down that list and it doesn't tell you how to fix everything, but it tells you the top 10 causes basically. Yeah. And I'm, it's probably, it's 90% certainty is one of the things on that, on that list. How you actually identify, because with this, those scullies, I didn't know it was, I, it hadn't even crossed my mind that it was the fox face because I figured like, it I, would have been I, the I, first thing on my list. <laughs> yes, it's true. This is true. But I, I would have thought that he would have like pecked it and gone for it. Yeah. And I would have other things as well, like if all stuff was sulking. But you know, anyway. But yeah, so you were right. <laughs> can I have a trophy? I've not had a trophy in a while. <laughs> no, can I, can I have a, just trophy that just says you were right. <laughs> I don't want to encourage you to be uh, to be smug. And if I got a trophy that just said you're right, Look, you just hold I need, it up at any I need, a, I need a win at the moment. This is my yeah. win. Let me I'll have this. You, not prepared to let you have that win. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a trophy anyway. I don't know. I don't really want a trophy. <laughs> Um, so that was that was all that's all the, the fish stuff. And actually the other thing, so because I broke my main tank down, my uh smart tester, my phosphate tester, my refactory one, was going spare. And I was just gonna leave it, but I thought, you know what, let's set it up on my on my water box. So I set it up on the on the water box tank instead. And I'd not really been testing, I've not tested phosphate on that for a little while. I knew it was high because when the last time I tested it, it was high. Um and I tested it. So I set the auto tester up and it was 0.4 was my phosphate. <laughs> and actually it went, it went yeah. the, the next test was said 0.45 yeah. and then it dropped back down to 0.4, but whatever it was at 0.4. And I was like, okay, I need to do something about it. I'd been testing my nitrate recently because my nitrate kept zeroing out. So I've, I've boosted that up by dosing a bit of nitrate and nitrate is now like five parts per million or something. It's fine. Um, but my phosphate got quite high. So I started, I've taken steps and this is the value of a, an automate, automatic test. It doesn't have to be the refactory one. It can be the robot. You've got the Reefbot, the Mastertronic, yeah. anything that does it automatically. They're so good because it's so easy to say, I'll just test. But when you've got something like this that does it every day, it's so useful. And now my phosphate is down to 0.3 and it'll do a test in a couple of hours. It'll probably be lower. 
yeah. because I've started dosing this stuff. I use that. Do you? Do you know, yeah, where, where yeah, is it? I used it the other day. This is Blue Life Phosphate RX. So it's his lanthanum chloride, basically. Yeah. Is it lanthanum? I'm sure it is. It must be. It can't be anything else. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is lanthanum chloride. It doesn't say, but it must be. Yeah. So, the, and I've never used this before. I bought this ages ago because I wanted to try it. <clears throat> but I just, I, uh, uh, what, one thing I didn't realize is you can't really put this on a doser. Or you probably could, but you'd have to dilute it because you need such a tiny amount. Yeah, yeah. On top of this, reduce my phosphate by 0.05 parts per million. Albeit in a small tank of about 120. Yeah, yeah. But that one drop, and that's less, I don't know how much, that's a milliliter, I don't know. So you can't put that on a doser really. Not on my tank anyway, it's too small. But it's really good. And what I've done now, I've set the, the tester up. So it tests, it gives me a result about 10 o'clock at night. And that's the time I'm going to bed. So, and I've set it. So if it goes outside of the range, it, I flash, it flashes up a, a notification to say your phosphate's too high. I go in, pop a little drop in, yeah. and it's done. <clears throat> and then the next day it's lower. Just it's be really... careful. Just be careful because you, you definitely can um, oh, yeah. strip out too much with that easily. <clears throat> for sure and this so i think i've put three drops in over the course of about 10 days oh i had when i was using it i was trying to bring it down and there was something that which stripped one of the it was something i would had for years it was it wasn't a, an expensive mm. coral um it was like a seriatopor or something yeah okay um or or a, one of the monty digis or something and it, and i just went that's weird then i checked with my hannah checker and that wasn't correct. So now you, that, it was saying that I still had phosphate, and then I checked with a reagent, and it went, "Your phosphate is zero. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, funny." <laughs> so, like we, thing I've noticed is we rely on Hannah equipment, yeah, and we treat me. it as yeah. if it's absolute. If that says you have phosphate, then you have phosphate. Mm. Um, but it, that, we found that with the salinity pen, and I've now found it with the ultra lone rage phosphorus. It is good. But it it's not nothing. Yeah, I don't think it's one hundred percent. Oh no! You should be skeptical of all testing equipment. Yeah. Whether it's a ten quid Salafert test kit or a thousand pound automatic tester, you should be skeptical of it. Yeah. But this, but this is, and I I've, I've got good lately at taking things slowly. Years gone by, I probably would have gone. Let's put five drops in. See what Just it does. See what happens. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then if it doesn't budge an hour, put another five drops in. But now it's like I've, I've literally put in three drops this week. Yeah. And I started like last Friday, so. And I because I don't like if it comes down to if it, I don't really don't really have a target for a bit 0 0.1 maybe if it comes down to that uh, over the course of a month it's fine yeah because everything's fine so I don't need to bring the phosphate down I just feel like it will be better if I do <clears throat> so but it just it's it's interesting stuff and uh, and there are well, there's all sorts of guides online the people online will tell you that phosphate uh, sorry um, lanthanum chloride causes all sorts of issues um, and there are other people who say it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> but um i'm taking it slowly and i'll find out but so far admittedly a week in <laughs> I like how, it. how are you dropping into the tank are you literally just putting it into the main display or no i'm putting it into the the filter roller so i put one drop into the it, it's effectively a filter sock so into the into yeah. the automatic i put one drop in and it goes into because that's what you're supposed you're either supposed to put it into the skimmer or a yeah. filter sock so it pulls it all the filter sock, though, has to be, I think it's like a five five or ten micron one, I think. Correct. I don't know what size it is, and I don't know what size my filter roller is. Yeah. Uh, but I figure that's the best I can do. Is it the Red Sea <laughs> one? No, it's the refactory. I don't know, then. Because they all have different micron sizes. For, for yeah, the, they... and they don't, they, don't, they don't all tell you the same. I think Red Sea doesn't yeah. quote a micron size, but yeah. But anyway, so I used to, I, I, actually, I tried it before in, in my main tank, and I put it into my skimmer. Um, but I don't have a skimmer on the water box, so. But yeah, so far so good. I didn't know that tank didn't have a skimmer. The no, tank looks got, so good. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I love it. It's so good. It's got a refugium. Yeah. Um, but I don't really want to run it. Well, I won't run a refugium on my next tank, and I want to have a skimmer. The only reason I don't have a skimmer, in an ideal world, I would just have a skimmer and a filter roller on that, but nothing else, no refugium. Yeah. But I don't want any noise in this tank, in this room. And even my kessels, make, the fans make some noise, and I don't, I, I don't like that. But you know, what, what if a fan, you know, how much of a fanboy I am with kessels, so I'm prepared to put up with that. <laughs> True. True. But skimmers are skimmers and fans are, are one thing. Skimmers, are, they when they they're fine at first, but after a while they're like, hmm, and it's just this low hum. <laughs> I quite like it. The reason I quite like it is because I know the tank's on. 
<laughs> when mm-hmm. the, if, it, if the tank is deadly silent, I don't know if it's running or if the power's out. <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think there's a very low level that I like, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's that. And I, also, the last thing I wanted to say, my weekend reefing, was I've added to my three favorite discoveries. So my three favorite discoveries in the last year or so were one, this stuff. This is the um, Reefs Elements Clearview glass spray. But the Fritz glass, Fritz, whatever it's called, Fritz spray glass cleaner is, is the same thing. Yeah. I just love it. It's so good. Number two is the Red Sea Baffle Removal Kit. It's like 10 or 15 quid. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it makes taking baffles out. I've tried it before, and every time you post online saying, oh, God, but taking baffles out is so hard, people will say, oh, use a guitar string, use a cheese grater, use use razors. Or they'll give you all these ideas. I've tried everything. It's an yeah. Especially if it's if it's in an awkward spot, it's a nightmare because the silicon is really thin, like wafer thin. Yeah. The Red Sea Baffle Removal Kit is amazing. So that's number two on my list of amazing discoveries. And the third one, this is what I've added to in the last week or so. Oh, this. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. <laughs> so this is my um, this is my lithium ion battery backup, and I've I've become a bit obsessed with battery backups in the last couple of weeks, as you know. Basically, yeah. all I talk to you about now, but it's just so good. That last I did a test the other day. It lasted between twenty four and thirty four hours. It went it, it, it stopped working overnight, and last I tested it. I think I stopped the clock at night. And it was twenty four hours forty five minutes. We called it twenty five hours. So it might have been 25 hours, it might have been 34 hours, but so, that's enough. That's long enough yeah, on my yeah. tech. And it's just tiny and lightweight. It's so, so good. And the other thing I like about this, because at, at the moment up here, I don't have any spare plugs in this room. They're all taken up. Yeah. And, but this is where I mix salt water for my water changes on the Cade and on the water box. I know where this is going. And now I can just, <laughs> pl- I've got a little portable power supply thing, basically. It's brilliant. It's so good. <laughs> Oh, sorry, so, uh, so I'd be just as excited as you. Wow. I, I know, yeah, I know. I know you're not going to be excited. But it's, I, it's, look, you have discovered something which c- could, in theory, help hundreds, if not thousands of people. So, yeah, actually, the, the reason I'm so excited about that is because I did a video on the Reef Talk Extra channel about this. Yeah. And the video was entitled uh, the, the Ecotech Battery Backup Just Became Obsolete. <laughs> yeah. Because I have it here. Oh, God. Hang on, I need. Laura, can you give me a lift in this thing? Oh, oh there you we go. Laura, because she's stronger than you. Oh, because I need about five people. So this is <laughs> this is the eco. I have two of these to be fair, and actually, the EcoTech battery backup is a really good bit of kit because it might save your tank. Um, yeah. But it's it's two hundred quid, and that's far too expensive for what it is. Um, and this is this is eighty quid, seventy five quid. It's tiny. It's lightweight. It's just so, so much better. And the, one of the things that I, I was thinking about and why I, why I think that the Reef Talk Extra video is quite important is because when I was first in the hobby, I really wanted a battery backup, some kind of power outage option because it's important and it might just save you your fish. Yeah. But I couldn't afford it. And I kept thinking 200 quid. I just can't justify that. Whereas if there's an option now for 70 quid, most people will justify that. And the thing is, the, the only problem with it is that th- this is a replacement for the Vortec. Uh, so you still have to have a, a Vortec pump, either yeah. the powerhead or the or the return pump. So you still have to have that. But there are plenty of people. Like I, at the time, I had one MP10, so I could afford that, an expensive powerhead, but I couldn't afford a battery backup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would have bought that. How much is the powerhead? Is it £130? <laughs> Oh, the powerhead is crazy. It's well, it was an MP10. What's an MP10 these no, days? No, not there. No, because you said you need to have a specific powerhead to work with it. Oh, well, so that works with an MP10 or an MP40. Oh, that's sorry. why it's so brilliant. So this is just a, a straight up replacement yeah. for, the, for the Ecotech battery backup. So I was making it was I was making a joke because I thought that if you combine the two, it equals the cost of the battery backup. <laughs> oh, I see. No, that's just a, a straight swap. Instead yeah. of buying the Ecotech battery backup, buy that. It'll save you 130 quid. Yeah. It's much much lighter, uh, and it's just it's just brilliant, and it's smaller. Uh, and the other thing, so the, I did look at some videos because I tested that. It was 24, 25 to thirty four hours is roughly how long it lasted. And my the EK Tech one, I tested. You were sending as well. me updates. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Takes you photos and stuff. The EK Tech one I tested as well, and my EK Tech one lasted six hours, <laughs> but it's three years old. Yeah, and they're, they're supposed they they last three to five years, so it's not quite a fair test. And actually, uh, BRS did a test about four years ago before you could get battery backups like this one. 
Um, and their their Ecotech one lasted 80 hours, so just over three days. But that was day one when it's brand yeah. new. And lead acid uh, doesn't last very well. So I don't I don't think that's a fair test either. I don't think either are fair tests. But theoretically, the Ecotech one will last longer than this one because it's got more capacity. But 24 hours is more than enough for 99.99% of people. If you live in Texas, and last year they had like a five-day power outage, yeah. fair enough, that's not good enough. Why five of them? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, it's very true. But it's just it's just brilliant. And I, so the, in terms of the power, I'll do another video soon that talks about battery backup for a nano tank. Because the other problem is that for, as a, for a battery backup, you can buy the Tunzi safety connector and you can DIY one, but they're fiddly. And most people don't want to play around with DIYing and with, with electric. So there's a, a por por portion of the hobby that does, but 95% don't, probably even yeah, more yeah. than that. I wouldn't. No, exactly. Um, and the, so, and the, but this, you can also use this for uh, a, a nano tank. And I bought a powerhead, that little uh, TMC one I showed you before. And that is now set up on my, um, my reef casa. And it's, it's running on one of these. And that is that's a battery backup as well for that. So now I have a battery backup that doesn't need uh, a Vortec pump. It just needs a 50 quid TMC powerhead. And it's brilliant. There you go. So I'm excited about that. Me too. Sorry. Me too. Uh, this is the other thing. So I've got a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, at some point I'm going to do a live stream with Telegram. And I, um, I have, uh, uh, I have. It probably a, should uh, have been this one because you two would have been like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I won't do it. I, won't, I was going to get him as a guest on, on the Sunday one, but I'll just do it separately. Whenever he's free. Yeah. Uh, basically he'll message me and i'll be like yeah we'll sign up now it'll probably be on a, like a, a friday afternoon u.s time yeah. but I've, I've got a list of questions that i'm going to ask him you're trying to make me jealous aren't you no i'm not no <laughs> not at all um i'm trying to save you uh the the, the pain hey. of sitting through because I, I did like we, i messaged him on instagram to arrange it and i said i said i can't uh, put ryan through this because if he talks if we talk about battery backups for more than 30 seconds it will top himself so <laughs> That's, that is true i i know you can tell that i'm tired of the like i i didn't sleep very well last night so this, it's not because it's only 50% because i'm not interested and it's 50% because i'm yeah, very yeah. tired <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Right. so well, don't... i'm talking to, i'm talking to everybody at home so. i know but sometimes people see my they go look at ryan's face <laughs> it's like so i'm now seeing him smiling trying to look interested <laughs> yeah I should so do this. Battery so, backups. Oh wow, yeah, just freeze like that. But yeah. so that so that if you can go and look at the the video on the Reef Talk Extra video that I just did um, on Friday, if you want to find it, and there's a link in the description to that. But this is basically this is a a, a mini UPS alt, uninterruptible power supply for a Wi-Fi router. So you can use as long as it's got a 12 volt output, which this one does. That's all you need to know. So you can go and find one. This is by a company called Talent Cell, and it's on Amazon for 70 quid. It's brilliant. Anyway, I'll spare you the... Well, let's talk about fish, Ryan. Yeah. Or Kevin wants to talk about my nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, how is your nose? I am on antibiotics from the doctor, and they think I have some sort of, like, weird tropical disease. <laughs> That's actually true. Right. So it, it is mostly better now. But um, when, I went to the, I, when I went to the doctor, because it was getting worse and worse, I was like, I'm not sure if I should tell you this, but I deal with coral. And then the woman was like... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, I had training for this. <laughs> so I'm like, look, don't worry. Just don't think about the coral. Just think about like what. Um, just think about like what you would do to fix me. And yeah. uh, she, so uh, she, uh, she originally she suggested a cream, which did not work. Uh, so then she has given me proper antibiotics. <laughs> oh right, was that like an antihistamine cream? No, it's actually it's actual antibiotics, and they're not the ones oh, you right. can. They're not the ones you can eat. Uh, so. I can't eat with them, so they're different to the normal ones that I would normally okay. have. So, so but yes. I mean, uh, it's, 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 uh, in theory, it's a bit scary to have a tropical disease, but if that's the worst it does to you, <laughs> sure. you're probably all Look, right. it's probably not a tropical disease, if you see what I mean. Yeah. But I think yeah. because I said it, it to her, it was like red alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I'm just going to ask you, answer a couple of other uh, battery backup questions. Uh, does that uh, UPS do 24 volts though? No, it doesn't. And that's why this is just a replacement for the Ecotech battery backup. It's not, so it'll, it'll, it won't power AI Nero's, for example, because they're all 24 volts. And the Ecotech powerheads are actually, they are 24 volts as well. But the battery backup slot 
is a 12 volt slot so that's why it works um and it will work with someone else asked if it'll work with a vectra yes it will exactly the same uh, you need the Ecotech booster cable, which you also need if you buy the Ecotech battery backup. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it does work. It works with those, but it won't work on most pumps. Like the Jekods I have on my Cade, it won't work with those. The AI Neros, it won't work with those. But it will work with MP40s, any of the MP40s, MP10, MP10s, MP60s, Vectra L1, L2, S2, Vectra L. Oh, yeah, all, all the all the Vectra, all the Ecotech stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, mp40 is 32 volt but the 12 the the, the battery backup um uh, slot is 12 volt and that's the, the crucial uh, thing because it when it when it kicks into battery backup mode it it kicks it down to like 50 percent and he's still awake i thought i thought I'd i'm still awake there you are i just got distracted by something so it's a couple fine. of other a couple of other things so uh woody's gamer tag thanks for the super chat says what's your bio biodiversity strategy for the new tank um I don't, I don't know if I'd call it a biodiversity strategy, but what I'm currently doing at the moment, I have a, a, a Rubbermaid uh, tub next to me, 32, uh, like a 10-gallon Rubbermaid tub, and that has a pet rock in it. <laughs> so I have two rocks that I took out from my main tank. One's been in there for six years. The other had been in there for about three years. And those rocks, I'm just keeping in salt water with a power head moving, and they're, they're blacked out. The one that what the one that's been there for six years within was in the sun. It's got a couple of sponges on it, but it's got no photosynthetic life whatsoever. Yeah. The other one was in the main tank that's got a couple of zoas on it and that sort of stuff. But they will all eventually disappear. So the plan is, I'll keep my pet rock uh, mixing with salt water. I'll do water changes on it to get rid of all the phosphate and all that. When yeah. my new scape arrives in the next week or two, probably end of this week, uh, sorry, end of next week or the weekend or the week after, I'll put that. I'll put them all in a bigger vat. So there'll be this brand new fresh rock in in a vat with this little pet rock I've got here, and that'll spread and infect the the, the new scape. And I'll keep them in a completely blacked out tub pro until the new tank is up and running. So probably for about a month they'll be blacked out and in water. So that's my biodiversity strategy, basically. Have you got a heater in there with yeah. them? Oh uh, no, no. Oh no, heater then. No, <clears throat> this, this room gets to the te the temperature gets it's about twenty one degrees. And it stays roughly that that temperature, but I don't think that's necessary for yeah. the purposes I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, but that's that's kind of if if you want to call that a bio, biodiversity strategy, that's what it is. I don't want just completely uh, a dry rock, dry sand, all that stuff. My, I want to seed it effectively. Yeah, and I always put some live rock in a new tank. So having, I that think that's the most important thing these yeah. days with yeah. new tanks to have mm -hmm. actual live rock, because trust me. The old tanks were way easier. <laughs> way yeah. easier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So so that's the plan with that. Um, I did something similar. You might consider putting a power head in there too. There is a power head in there. <laughs> yeah, just I was just aerating it. Um, so yeah, but it's it's um yeah, I think that's potentially really good. And it'll just mean that I won't have I'll have some rocket, I don't know, probably 10 kilos of rock, so 20 pounds of rock of live rock going into the tank and my new scape will have been seeded for a few weeks so don't you worry all this effort all this effort you know you're, like <laughs> <Okay>. trust me <laughs> <laughs> it's all for nothing it, well um coral euphoria recommends putting a lower power light over the new rock rather than blacking it out i'm not going to do that but um abe is the man so listen to abe more than me True. Uh, but i'm i'm not going to do that i'm just going to keep it um uh blacked out basically and um and circulated as long as it's got as long as it's oxygenated and it's in salt water how many zoos are in there oh they start to die and like literally, i know into the water. <laughs> that's why i'm gonna do a water change but literally one or two heads i just noticed okay. this morning actually i didn't even realize there's a couple of asterines in there obviously <laughs> nice well they'll, they'll survive <laughs> yeah 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 but it'll, it'll all be fine so um what else was i gonna do uh and so that's ba that's basically everything on that so fish list then I'm going to go, if you've got fish that you want, so I, this tank will be six foot by two foot by two foot, roughly, for the sake yes. of argument. So fish suggestions are all gratefully received. So chuck them in the comments and in the chat. And I'm going to go through a couple on the um, uh, on the Facebook group, and I'm going to get Ryan uh, as well. And then I'm going to tell you the ones that I'm currently thinking of. So the ones in the, in the, the loads in the in the chat in the on the facebook group uh some people were <laughs> were playing with house money
because they were talking about butterflies, angels, triggers, puffers. Nice. <laughs> and he, this guy was suggesting, it was Mike Nicosia, he was suggesting a fowler tank, to be fair. But there was koi parrotfish. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. Big fan of that idea. I know you like that idea. Oh, yeah. Magnificent fox face, not going to happen. I might not put any rabbit fish in there now. Because what I want, what my plan with this is, I don't want... I want to, you, when you set up this, your angelfish tank, yeah. it was a challenge for you because you were like, I want to see how I can, uh, how we can deal with the, the angelfish eating corals and all that sort of stuff. It was not the challenge I was expecting though. <laughs> no, no. But you set, you set out to, to have a challenge. Yes. I don't want a challenge at all. I don't want any complexity. So I'm not going to choose any fish. I'm not going to get a copper band. I'm not going to get any fish that I think will eat. Um, will eat corals. I want the easiest life possible. A reef tank for me is challenging enough. Uh, so I want to try to keep it fairly simple. Yeah. You want to get one of those special prestige reef copper bands, don't you? Why? I'll sort you out. No, because they'll eat corals. <laughs> no, no, no. These ones. Well, yeah, if I'm giving one away, it's one I don't want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, I'm not, I'm not definitely not getting a copper band. There'll be no butterflies. A couple of people suggested pyramid butterflies and you can keep them in small shells of three or four or five. But, um, and I had three before and I didn't like them. But even they're a risk, even though they're supposedly reefs, a reef safe butterfly, even they're a risk. Uh, but loads of, of tang suggestions. Damselfish. No, I, I think that, was... that you should do what I have always wanted to do. You need What's to that? get one of every zebra zoma tang. There are seven. No. You got there are no. seven. And keep all seven of them together Ugh. and have no other fish. I just Perfect. said I don't want a, a challenge. <laughs> and you're telling me I should get. That wouldn't be a challenge. A They'd be all, they wouldn't be aggressive. They'd all be fine. If you put them in all at the same time at the same size, they probably would no be way. fine. No way. Yeah. No. They probably would be fine. No. Just remember, though, one of them is a black tank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Money. Um, and that's no, the I, one that gets white spot. <laughs> yeah, this is true. But I, even that, even they might be fine at first, but they'd be aggression throughout. I'm sensitive to aggression, as, as we've established. But I'll tell you that the fish I'm looking at, so on top of the ones I've got, I've only got a list of like five or six, and I'm in no rush. So this is over the course of a year, two years, whatever. Yellow Rass. And I know you love Rass. Yeah. Scarus Koi, which you think is a bad idea. I think it's a bad idea. Why do you think it's a bad idea? Because they get quite big. They're like a bit, they're sort of like bulky where they go around like biting stuff. So a bit clumsy. I just, it's, I think it's the sort of thing that you will regret long term. I'll fish him out. Well, I'm just, that's, <laughs> but yeah. That's, I yeah. thought, I thought you wanted an easy life. Oh, I do, but I still, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think of that. So my, I had one before, and it was crunching at the bases of my acros. Exactly. <laughs> but I think, I think it was crunching. I think it didn't touch the LPS, and I think it was doing that to get to algae underneath. So I think it might be okay, but I'm not saying he's going to be safe. But that is, that's a possibility. Apart from that, two dragon pipefish. Yeah, I think they're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Either an orchid or a splendid dotty back, probably an orchid dotty back, because uh, they're um, they're quite nice purple color and they're one of the more peaceful dotties. Are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one before; it was good. Yeah, and a royal grammar because I love royal grammars. Who doesn't love royal grammars? Yeah, I got one of those. But and uh, what else? Unicorn tank. Can we all stop? They're not going to fill your tank very much. <laughs> Well, no, this is this is a start, but we need to stop suggesting tangs. Clown tang, mustard tang. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, no, I no. I think no, we, no. Should read we... Jay, we should read uh, Jay's Real Reef's comment. Jay's Real Reef. Yeah, I think. I remember how bad your taste in fish is, Alex. Remember the, the live when you went to went head to head with Ryan and lost every round? Good times. Yeah, I remember still, those times. Still, still hers. But uh, <laughs> You won but, the yeah. coral one, though, didn't you? I did. That still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, there's, I, I might have a tang. I might have a blonde naso tang because they're yep. supposedly the one of the, the most peaceful. You've said that before. It, like, it keeps everyone in check. And he doesn't... Yes, yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want, I'm not going to have several tangs. I'll have my white tail coal tang who might get aggressive at some point. I might, I've got a Tommy tang as well um, that I might put in there. We'll see. But I'm not having several zebra samas. I don't like, don't like them purples and all that uh and all that tamarind leopard rass tamarind um i don't think that's a leopard rass a tamarind i think is an anamsis rass but tamarind rass would be cool anything like that the trouble is that they're, they're, they're probably not a good idea early on so rasses like that will be later how do you feel about latin names 
I don't like Latin names. Acanthus, <laughs> well, that's a tang, isn't it? Ni Nigra fuscus. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is, but it'll be one that's similar to a powder blue or a. a... Dory. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's Acanthus tangs are like Soho tangs, things like that. I think it's one of the ones. It's black with a yellow. I believe. No, I don't. I, if you're suggesting a, a scientific name, I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> it is. It's I'm not what I thought it was. It is the ugliest brown tang, and I think I've got two yeah. of them. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Scribbled angel. No, 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 no. No angels. This is going in an LPS tank. Not having any angels. I might have, might get a genocanthus angel because they are genuinely reef safe. So the, um, what are they called? Um, a bellus angel. They look all right. Mm. The spot breast angel, all that lot. Boring. They are a bit boring. That's a trouble. The the one that, um, that I really like is the Japanese masked swallowtail, of course. Yeah. Get myself a pair of them. <laughs> well, we both we both know there's a uh, well I've actually got, I'm actually on a waiting list for them. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. <laughs> Are you actually? Yeah. yeah. But well, unofficially. But it, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, what about a tank full of nano fish? Uh, suggests Ethan Taylor. I like the idea, and I will have. I like small. I think small fish in a big tank look cool. And uh, although having a big tank is tempting to just put big fish in, they'll be they'll be happier in there because little fish like big space. Um, but I won't have I won't have loads. I'll have a few. Like a, there's a goby and a um, uh, the 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 uh, the uh, royal grammar and all that lot. Blue ribbon eel. I won't get one, but I think they're cool. I've re what, one thing I was thinking recently is changing the K to a, a garden eel tank. No, but terrible idea. I, I'm not going to do it, but it would be yeah. so cool. <laughs> for like no, it week. would be so boring. It would be cool for like one no. day. Oh, that I wouldn't I wouldn't get bored of them. The hassle would be. No, they it don't do anything. Off. They just—they just—it's like just having grass. No, they're so cool. No, you're no. It, it would be no different having a jellyfish tank. How about a panther grouper with a load of chromis? That's a good shout. Yeah. I uh, no, it should be not a panther one. It should be a um. Whatever it was, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what one they were for. The, that red one with blue dots. Yeah. <laughs> Is there an update on that yet? I don't follow. I don't follow any of them, do I? So no. It's, it's, I. I I think 52 weeks of reefing is dead. Although BRS um, BRS uh, haven't done an announcement. I actually deleted that video that I talked about last week where Ryan said he was stepping, BRS Ryan said he was stepping aside for a week. They deleted that video and they've not said anything since then. It's been over a week. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe someone behind the scenes was like, no, take it down. I don't but, Maybe. Um, <laughs> I can't take our one down. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, you can pay me to take it down. I'll take a million pounds. <laughs> half a million discount 50 percent off um but uh what was i gonna say and i'll just make another one um but yeah so no I, I think that's that 52 weeks series is likely to die death i would guess but they'll they'll tell us all uh, this is speculation so, so it's more of like four weeks of briefing yeah exactly <laughs> and 52. It, it would be good to see updates on them but i don't know I, i've got no idea to be fair. I, I have no uh, no input miniatus that was the name of the group yeah there. yeah um but anyway, so we'll keep doing suggestions because I'll look and after the, the stream, I'll look back and I'll, I'll pull out the suggestions I like. And I already saw a couple on the Facebook page. That I was like, well, actually, that's a good idea. I think someone suggested Royal Grammar on the Facebook page. And I know that's a really obvious fish to suggest, but I'd forgotten about that. And I, I think I love having Royal Grammar. So good shout. Whoever uh, that what about some sort of scooter, Blenny? Uh, at some point, yeah. I'd like just a normal scooter, a little mottled brown one. Mm, I like the pink ones the most. So, you know, you get like bright red ones with yellow, and then you get pink yeah. ones, and then you get brown ones. The pink ones are my favorite, I think. I So I had the scarlet ones. Yeah, the like red, 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 red and red yellow. Red, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they were really cool, but I had a pair, and uh, the female got egg bound, so I wouldn't get a pair yeah. again. I really like the green ones. Is it the green spotted ones, they're called? That's a mandarin. There's, it's a mandarin, yeah, but same thing. They're yeah. all um, what, what's the the proper name for the, the, the group of fish? Can't remember. Uh, dragonet. They're all dragonets. Yeah. So I, so I would like it. I would either like a scooter blenny, or just a standard scooter blenny, or a green spotted mandarin. I think it's a green spotted mandarin. I think they're cool, and they are supposedly two of the ones that are more likely to eat prepared food. But this is this is not day one. <laughs> no. And I've and the trouble is I I'll have a few rasses. <laughs> That's so... the problem. They compete. Exactly. They, they go for the same food source. And actually, the hawkfish um, that you're looking after at the moment, especially the falco and the scarlet, they yeah. both eat copepods and amphipods. Every time I take my tons of algae magnet off, they're over and I see them hoovering up tiny little copepods, tiny little things, and they hoover them up. So 
another fish that would would compete with the the, the scuba bunny. So I worked out what the success, how to have success with a mandarin fish is oh, yeah. because I have one in the coral farm. Um, and what you need is a 4,000 litre coral farm <laughs> because yeah. I don't feed this special. This thing is the fattest mandarin I've ever seen. I only saw it the other day. For, I don't look for all the fish all the time. Yeah. And I just saw it. I was like, what have you been eating? Because <laughs> this, <laughs> is, this is, I actually got it by accident. Um, I ordered a really? load of fish from a, uh, a, my local fish shop. And I said, don't put them in your system. I'll take them straight in the bags. Yeah. And I'll, um, and I took about six or seven fish, but I took seven or eight bags because <laughs> there was one oh, fish, geez. which was another customer's. <laughs> and I, I didn't know this. The, the owner just gave it to me. I got home and I was like, why have I got a mandarin? <laughs> and I just said to him, look, I'm, you're 45 minutes away. I'm not driving all the way back there. It's not worth my time. Mm. Um, I'll just pay you for it and I'll, um, and I'll put it in there. And it's, uh, yeah, it does really well. The one, so someone said, uh, is it a psychedelic mandarin? Yeah. The one I'm talking about is this one. It's just called a spotted mandarin. Um, I saw another name for it as well a minute ago that I didn't, I'd never seen before. Uh, what was it called? Picturesque dragonet. Never <laughs> I've never heard, heard it called that. <laughs> That's Wikipedia. But anyway, it's the, it's the spotted mandarin. It's green and it's spotted. So I call it green spotted. But, uh, but I, I don't know. Maybe years down the line. Maybe a year or so down the line. But it's probably not a good idea. But that's a scooter blenny. Supposedly, they're more likely to eat frozen food. So maybe that's a better shell. And they are a bit boring, but I just love the way they like scoot along them. It's just, they're just yeah. a different character. And I like that. The so, list of fish, which are probably a good idea, is actually very small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. Clownfish. There's, there's not, that, yeah, basically just yeah. clownfish. Yeah. A single Bangai cardinal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not um, totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, because actually, so my I've got one Bangai Cardinal in the water box, and he'll be going in there as well. And he's really cool. And having a pair was awesome. But it's lots of fish like that. So the, actually, you, <coughs> excuse me, you mentioned your um, Bangai Cardinals did the same as mine did. So yeah. they breed and then they they don't because it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. supposed to do it. It's not natural. I had the same issue with the two um, Dragonets, my Scarlet Dragonets. They do this dis mating dance where they sort of float up next to each other yeah. and then they shoot down really quickly it's so cool to watch and they were doing it for the night after night it's one of the it's just it's one of the things that gets you into the hobby and like you can talk about how good fresh water is compared to salt water but when you see something like that it's like oh this is why i mean it was so cool but i would never do it again because she became egg bound and died yeah it's, so. <laughs> you are very lucky because you i assume have always had sofas where your tank is so you can sit and watch it yeah yeah oh i have never had that at all ever until i got the water box and now yeah <laughs> and now i don't want to look at it <laughs> so that they're, they're yeah go on i literally built did i literally like yeah. put sofas and a little coffee table in front of the tank specifically so i could sit and watch it yeah. and now i don't want to sit and watch it well, so I've got two, so with my my water box is always just to my left. It's literally I can touch it. There yeah. you go, I'm touching it now, and that tank looks amazing. And it's head height. It's perfect head height. This is where I sit three days a week doing work, so I can just look across and see the gunnies, and it's amazing. And on the main tank, that is in my living room, so there's a sofa in it. But this, it's always off at a funny angle. You can, and you've got really you've got to go and stand in front of it, so it's not quite the same. But yeah. with a new tank, I'll have a chair opposite it. Oh, yeah. we're, we're shuffling around the living room so that's good i'm just gonna be there like all day long basically so are you still out you got, have you got a tv in there i think you do don't you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. i'm just trying to think how you're going to be able to shuffle have a, a thing something in front of it and still be able to see the tv i'll show you next time i'm up but uh, we, we, we're moving some stuff around but um but yeah and the, but having the water box right next to me and and i and head height where i'm sitting down i two of my gunnies the red and the green one man they're just they're so awesome. I love goodies. <laughs> I need a little chair in the fish room and I need a little fridge for beer. That's what I need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good I idea. Had, I used to, when I first started the coral farm, I used to actually go in there on a Friday with a glass of wine and I will sit on one of the stalls in between all the, you know how you can sit in the middle bit? Mm -hmm. So you can see four of the tanks and the one in front of you, so five of them. I used to do that, whereas I've not done that for, for years now. 
it's quite a small space, though, isn't it? If you had it, if you when you upgrade to a bigger yeah. farm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> those are the rules. You can factor in that and have a viewing area, like a sofa with like a proper a mini bar, and you know, oh, yeah, mini bar looks turn into a blind nightclub all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> um, other fish suggestions: Achilles or gold rim tank? Terrible idea. Terrible no, idea. I, I would love an Achilles, but I would have to say you can come in on on uh, these conditions. Number one, you don't you're not aggressive. And they'd be like, no, thanks, mate, I'm out. Number two, you don't give everyone white spot. No, thanks, mate, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you can find me one, if you can train an Achilles not to get too big, not to get too aggressive and not to get disease, I'll take it. I actually wondered, I was thinking this today, I wondered if you would quarantine your fish because you've, mo- you've already got the majority of your fish. <clears throat> so you can do those all in one go. Do you know what I actually thought? What I actually thought was... Why? What have you done to my fish? Nothing. Um, what I thought is I could I could quarantine yours for you is why actually I'm not going to. It was a weird yeah. thought that came into my head for like a moment, and I was like, nope, this is a pain in the ass to do. Um, well, it's not really a pain in the ass, but I thought about it and I just thought, actually, I don't want to risk like putting them through carpal treatment. Why would I fish. quarantine? For, I know they're they're in different water now. They're in your tank, not mine. But why yeah. would I quarantine fish that I've had for years that I know are healthy? That to me, and I'm, I'm sure, like maybe Humblefish would say, no, you really still should do because you're moving it to a different system. Yeah. But that to me makes no sense. Yeah. No, I well, I know. Well, I, I'm 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 part of the anti-quarantine gang. So <laughs> you had some issues with quarantine, didn't you, when you first did I hated it? quarantine? So this the trouble. One of the problems I think I would be better at it now because <laughs> I've I've got a bit more experience. Whereas when I first when I got my first tank, I think for six months I didn't quarantine. But then I did start, I had an issues and I started quarantining and I just lost so many fish to in quarantine. Uh, and I found, I found, I don't know, 50% success rate of fish coming through quarantine. I don't what know what you, I was. Yeah. What were you doing that was wrong? I don't know. And and I, I tried a few different things. I bought a bit, I started with a smaller one. I bought a bigger quarantine tank. I was, I, I was all over the forums taking advice from people. I think I was listening. I can't remember now. I used chloroquine phosphate, which is supposedly better than copper. Maybe I was overdosing that. I was following the guides, but maybe I was overdosing that. Maybe I had ammonia spikes. I think uh, I had. A, I it think could I have had been a. The copper you were using. The what? It could have been the copper that you were I using. Chloroquine phosphate. Oh, um, sorry. It's malaria tablets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could it could have been that. I, but I don't because I didn't always use that though. Uh, and I had, I had. <laughs> there was one though. I got a, a leopard ras, uh, the peacock ras. Sorry. Uh, really common, aren't they? Yeah, put him yeah. in the put him in the quarantine tank. Left him there for I don't know a couple of days or a week before I started. Um, I was going to start treatment, and he just I had a little Tupperware tub of sand because you know I thought about him, <laughs> make yeah. a bed for him, uh, and I was like, okay, uh, let's go and start treatment then. And he just disappeared, and I was like, that's weird. And I I, I went back a couple of days in a row. He wasn't there. I so I checked everywhere around the tank, and I had a cat, so it's possible that he jumped out and got eaten but i had a lid on it it had yeah. literally a, a plastic a solid lid not a mesh cover a literal lid it was like a freshwater tank yeah yeah it wasn't he hadn't jumped out i'm almost certain i i then after a while after another week or so had passed i was like do you know what i know i shouldn't do this but i'm going to disturb the sand bed so i disturbed the sand to see if he was in there completely emptied it nothing not even a skeleton i have literally no idea what happened there was nothing else in there there were no inverts there was no other fish weird uh, just bizarre i the only the most sensible explanation would be that he jumped out found a hole in. somewhere because there was a canister filter exactly yeah, in the yeah. ca- but it was in a it was in a cupboard under my stairs but that i i had i just i i tried uh uh treating a uh, uh, quarantine for i don't know six months you, you could probably go back and find on my ultimate reef thread how long i tried it for at least six months a couple yeah. of different tanks. I followed all the advice. I tried different methods and I just had endless problems with it. That's why I didn't like it. And I found it caused me more problems than it did good. But that was at a time when I was green. So I probably didn't, I think I'd be better at it now. But I've had a hundred percent success rate with regards to survival, but not a hundred percent success rate with regards to keeping stuff out. <laughs> it's so bizarre. So that you've had that. yeah, but, I, I don't know um but no I, I won't be but i do I, it does make me nervous especially when i've got these fish that i've had for a long time that's part of the reason i don't i haven't added new fish even though i've, I've lost a couple for, to old age and all that sort of stuff it's part yeah. of the reason i haven't added new fish because why take the risk 
But anyway, um, but yeah, so I think we've everyone stopped suggesting tangs now, which is good. <laughs> Although I was thinking a powder blue would be cool. Assessor. <laughs> That's what you want, an assessor. Oh, uh, do you know what? Someone else on YouTube had an assessor. Was it March? Uh, I've, got, I've got two. You've you've got oh you've I've seen one of them. Like yeah. someone was talking about it recently on a, a video I saw. I can't remember which one it was, but they were saying they love it. Yeah, it's possible. They're quite bright, aren't they? Yeah. Which one did you see? The yellow one. Yes. The reason you didn't the other one you saw as well. You just didn't realize you saw it Hammer. because the background <laughs> is black and the and the assessor is is dark blue. Okay. So you never see it because <laughs> it, it's right. there, but it's just camouflaged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you probably you would have seen I got them at the same time, so you would have seen both of them. I'm pretty sure I got them at the same time. I, I can only remember seeing one of them, but yeah, okay. I take the point. Oh, Swiss guard basslet, yeah, that's a good choice. Although there are other there are other different types of basslets which are Oh, I was about to say, so the two expensive ones I'm thinking about are the De Jong-y Grammar, which is a reversey oh, Percy. Cha-ching! But the, 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 they're only, last time I saw one, they were 600 quid. I know it's a lot of money, but it's a lot less than they were at one point. The only thing with the De Jong-y Grammar is it's not that much cooler than a normal Royal Grammar. And in fact, if you'd never seen a Royal Grammar before yeah. and you put them next to each other, I think most people would be like, eh, yeah, they're both pretty cool. So I think I, I think I kind of like that because it's it's fancy and it's rare, yeah. which is a bad reason to buy a fish. What's the what's the expense of the peppermint basslet? What's it called? Candy, candy basslet. basslet. Yeah, candy. There are other ones. There are like yeah, probably four or five different types of basslets. Um, <laughs> they're like two and a half grand though, I think, or something the, ridiculous. The last time I saw, they were about eighteen hundred quid, and I don't yeah. think I could bring myself to. That was a long time ago. Things are more expensive yeah, these days. Very true. <laughs> But that 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 is a really cool fish. One thousand nine hundred forty nine in stock on oh marine marineworldaquatics.co.uk has one in stock. I'll buy it now. One nine four nine two grand. <laughs> but yeah. I'd be worried about that jumping, to be honest. Maybe yeah, you're gonna have a lid, aren't you? Even then, fish jump when there's a lid. I had a bloody um, was it? Yeah, it was my Fluval Evo. Had a, a, a goby jump out of that and had a cover on it. And the, the there was a gap, but it was tiny. But you just can't have any gap at all. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Can, can I just ask answer Gary's question quick? Um, Gary, yes. That's the question. Uh, up. Uh, awesome. Yes, that one. Uh, so I don't know what is different about Dip X, which is killing the Sophastria, Uh, But uh, I dip Coral. I use Coral RX on Sophastria all the time, and it, and it doesn't strip them. So I'm not sure what okay. what's happening with that one. I think Dip X, Red Sea Dip X is quite mild. Um, but you, the other one, what's the other one? I, so I've just used up the last of it. Oh God. It's the potassium salt one reef primer and, uh, tidal gardens talk about that. I, I went through a spell of using that quite a lot. And then because it doesn't all, all dissolve, yeah. it sits at the bottom of the container. And I, I had an acro that touched the, the stuff that hadn't dissolved at the bottom of the container. It burnt the skin. Yeah. So I stopped using it for a while after that. And then I switched to red sea because it's easy to mix in and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, Cor Coral RX, that's. That's yeah, I use Coral RX. Bleach and tea tree oil, I think that is. It works. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Um but weird that it, it kills Sophastria. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. That, that makes me think that there was something wrong with the Sophastria. Mm. But anyway. I know yeah. corals react to react differently to different things, but oh, yeah. you saw your your Sophastria in my last video. The, I did, yeah, how thick it was. The that yeah, yeah. was insane. When I saw that, I was like, that is what calc does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, because yeah, as you, I was watching that video, and as you were saying it, you're like, I don't know what it is. And I was like, calc, calc, calc. And you said it. I was like, yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's normally like wafer thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but it was a proper. Like, is, it's like translucent, translucent yeah. um, sephastria sometimes when it's growing. Whereas yours is like, you know, thick. a couple of mils thick. thick. Yeah. But I did actually. So there was a big chunk of that cyphaster on the on the weir box, wasn't there? And I managed to get it off after you had left, but because yeah. it had been exposed to air for probably yeah, yeah. quite a while, and then it fell into cold water, it it died. So I got loads of it anyway, so it doesn't tick me out. Um, another great suggestion: geometric pygmy hawkfish. That is, yeah, I had one of them on my until a couple of years ago. Fantastic. They're tiny, yeah, and they're secretive, but I love that about them. That they normally like sit with their back. They're, they're face, facing the rocks, is the one I think. Oh, they, no, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a coral croucher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone suggested that as well. They're quite cool. Yeah. See, I like the idea of little fish like that in a big tank. And the, but the pigment perch is a wicked suggestion. Good, good I think that, that it would be... 
loads and loads of small fish would be a cool is would be a cool idea that most people yeah. don't do because most people have tanks for yeah. algae control. Yeah, but I don't want tanks. Basically. Yeah, Just get like a hundred amphiers. No, I was just say a couple of people on the on the Facebook page suggested chromis and and amphiers. Not happening. That's another fish that I don't want the hassle of. Because yeah. I don't care how many people, you, if you find, you'll find someone eventually will be like, oh, I don't know what the fuss is about. You just need to feed them. Well, I've tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> uh, so I don't want, don't want, I don't want scorning fish. Yeah. Um, invertebrates. Oh, clams. I am going to have uh, so a clam, at least one clam, probably a Durasa because it's an LPS tank. So I don't want, this is one thing I don't want. Um, I don't want a highlight demand clam because I'd have to have a highlight spot and yeah. that would compromise everything else. Actually, someone on the on the Facebook page posted this uh, uh, earlier in the week and said they've got a, a torch or something like that, an LPS coral that was under 300 par and it was doing great. And they were saying, do we underestimate how hardy corals can be and how adaptable they can be? And my thought to that was to a degree, yes, but is it, is it successful because of that or in spite of that? And I yeah. personally prefer to say, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that all corals are weak and I would rather try to give them the perfect conditions that I know they want rather than try to mix it up. So that's why I don't want acros in that tank because yeah. I'd have to have highlight spots or low light spots and it's a compromise. I don't want the compromises. I want to make this as easy as I can do. Um, Mandarin harem. Like 10. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> That's Maybe asking for disaster. But yeah. Um, anyway, right, we're going to move on. I don't suppose you have a, a, a coral of the week and a fish of the week this week. Well, I just thought the fish of the week is going to be what this is, and I never have a coral week, do I? So, what, what's the, the actually, fish of the week? Is? Actually, there you go. I've just picked my coral of the week. There you go. Blastamusa. Hang there on. Let's wind back. What's the, what's the fish of the week? Well, we've, we've just done loads of fish. The thousand. The fish of the week is a thousand. Is all of the fish. Pick, pick one of them. <laughs> one of them. I want uh, the fish of the week. Someone's just written pink line ras. There you go. That will do. Uh, aren't they a bit boring? Pink line. Rass. Oh, I'm sorry. That pick some random fish, and I picked a boring one. Is that the same as a pink streaked ras? Actually, your little. <laughs> no, I look. I'm gonna have to see. I might be. Able, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you. There was a fish which was on Instagram. Okay. Can you see this? It's just no. white. It is like an anthias. Okay. Which is red and white. I've never seen one before. And I was like, what is that? But Whose anyway, Instagram was it on? I don't know. It was like, a, it was an Asian one. So you couldn't even read what the, oh, what the writing said. Okay. But I was just like, that is the coolest fish. I mean, so, I'm sure it looks better in the photo, but that is, well, I'll accept that as a fish. It looks, it looks like an Antheus bred with a koi carp. You know, one of those white ones with the red, red on them. I don't get koi carp. They're just, they're boring to me. Well, but, I liked it anyway. I like things I haven't seen before. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, boring. That's how I yeah. feel about battery backups. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Uh, Reef talk. Do you feel that you get that much more out of an aquarium so much bigger than your flea believer? I don't have that anymore, but yes, one hundred percent, I do. Um, but actually, to be fair, a better uh, example is the water box, which is two foot by two foot by sixteen inches tall, and that I loved. I ended up loving more than my four foot by two foot tank because it was the corals in there were just fantastic. But yeah, bigger tanks, bigger Actually, tanks are awesome. I have officially picked a fish of the week. So is it? it is a white capped goby. Oh yeah, okay. You had one of they those. They are cool. Ones. I had one of these a long time ago in the in my once in five tank. years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you hardly ever see them. And <clears throat> they they have a very specific pistol shrimp, which you can this see one. there. It's got a little Alpheus pink on it. Rubriclamatus. Yep, that's the one. Um, and the only way I could have success with this, I had to feed an entire cube of lobster eggs because if I didn't feed a cube of lobster eggs, it didn't get fed because <laughs> yeah. you can't get food to it. Yeah. So you just put millions of these lobster eggs in and then eventually it'll catch them. Okay. So they, they, I, put, I was an idiot. I put in a thousand litre tank rather than put in <laughs> like a little nano tank. But they, it was one of the coolest fish I ever had. Okay. I like that. I like shrimp gobies, to be fair. They're cool. Yeah. All um, right. And your coral of the week was? Blastomusa. Blastos. Yes. Blasto. And I picked Musta. it because it's on this mug. <laughs> are they still Blastomusa wells? Or is that a coral that's been... Um... Do you know what the first thing that comes up when you Google Blastomusa wells is? 
prestigebeef.co.uk, the UK's number one coral selling website. Oh, that's I haven't had those in for ages. Have they're you not? Oh, they no, they're not in stock. stock. Yeah, they're out of stock. Oh, I've sold out. Oh, yeah. That's a shame. Um, I thought you had them. You had them last time I saw you. I I don't have those ones. I have I oh, okay. have the Maletis, but they're not on the website. Oh, the Blastos um, are cool. I've got into Blastos recently. Yes, they need very very low light. Is what I was going to say. Think, yeah, uh, people are starting to realise now. That's nice. Um, oh, the I had a whole range of them at one point. I had some really really interesting, like brightly coloured ones. Yeah. Uh, that yeah they they did they sold and they did really well. Okay. Um, they they the problem with Blastos when it comes to actually growing them yourself is they have these little tiny little buds on the side of them. So it, they don't grow out so you can frag them. They sort of like oh, just grow sweet. like as a ball. And right. so there's like no point in them <laughs> because I can't it, I can't frag. Even if you keep it for a year, it still is like this little tight ball really you can't tight. frag off. So apparently they're quite slow growers. My two are actually yeah. all right. They're not as I, as I as found them to be slow. But maybe when I say slow growing, it's they, they grow the heads, but they don't they don't spread out. Right, if you see what I mean, so you can actually culture them. I do have uh, some in the in the tank behind me, but they're they're really sulky. They've got a couple of vermited snails poking at them, yeah. and I think they're probably getting too much light. I think. Do you remember I had a salinity problem ages ago? Yeah, I think that's. I think the blaster did not like that at all. Oh, really? Were, yeah, I think they were the one of the most the first things to be annoyed. It was those in the sophastrids that just did not do well in that tank anymore. Right. Okay. Oh, I found a nice blasto. Check out that. Uh, I had a really, really, like, really nice one, which was like I rainbow remember. color. Yeah, I almost. Yeah. Bought... I think you sold it quite quickly, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had two of them, I think. Just two. They were two big heads. Because you sort of get you get the small heads now, uh, which are the um, maletis, and then you get the the medium ones, and then you also get some like really, really big ones. Mine are quite big. I think they must be well in that case. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Think they're... I know the ones you mean, the little ones. Yeah. They're but not as nice. No, okay. Well, that's a good car of the week, for especially for a, a two second on the spot thing. There you are. Uh, that's, why you, that's why you bring me back every week, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> but that brings us on to everybody's favorite segment the news. Oh, the news, yeah. Uh, didn't Biota just release something about them gobies? Did, I haven't seen if they did. Um, anyway, so news. There's uh, quite a lot of news this week, uh, despite uh, uh, Reef Builders hasn't got a lot of news on. I think Reefstock is Reefstock a Reef Builders show? I, I think it was done. I don't know if it's Reef Builders, but it was done by Jake Adams. Yeah. And they had one in Denver and one in Australia. So there's Reefstock, Reefstock Denver, I think is on at the moment. I've seen videos, so I assume it's on. Maybe it was on on the weekend or whatever. But anyway, I've wondered if, if the Reef Builders guys have been busy with that, but maybe it's not them. I don't know. I think it is them. Anyway, whatever. They probably um, still do it. it. It was As I said, it was definitely Jake that did it. Yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, so but so there's there's not actually much on, on Reef Builders this week, but there's quite a lot elsewhere. First thing first is, Ryan, we've got a rival. Not good. There aren't many. I know we need to we need to do something about it. And I'm, a, them out. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell people about this. Uh, it's a new podcast. Yeah, but you mustn't listen to it because you can only listen if you've only got a limited amount of time. Listen to this. If you have <laughs> spare time, you may then listen to. I'm giving you permission. You may then listen to another podcast. Basically, if you want no information, come here. And if you want actual information, go elsewhere. <laughs> exactly right. But there's a new podcast, and this is. Of a YouTuber I mentioned recently, Kalamazoo Reefer, but he yeah. started a podcast that you can. It's a, it's, it, he does a video on it, but it's a downloadable podcast on Spotify, not yet Apple Podcasts, but various various podcasts. Basically, it's on Spotify, and this is it. Um, and he did one last week that was uh, he covered the BRS, uh, the Ryan leaving from BRS stuff, yeah. and he's actually that's the only other place I've seen talk about uh, Ryan from BRS. No one else has talked about it, but anyway, um, um, we're brave enough to you know we're not worried we're about the backlash. Double hard bastards, you and me. But um, but he yeah, so he it's it's well worth a listen. So go and check it out if you like reefing podcasts. And he so he had a he's based in the States, of course, Kalamazoo, which I think is in Michigan actually. Um, but he uh, he gave a US perspective on the on the BRS stuff, and it was quite interesting from because from my point of view, and he he's he identified this quite uh, well. 
from my point of view, BRS is a YouTube channel, <laughs> but in the States, it's not, it's a shop. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's kind of 50-50, whereas over here, we're just like, oh, it's a YouTube channel. Um, and there was some interesting, and there's all, they see stuff as well. He, he sees stuff that passes me by. So on this, um, this podcast that he did about BRS, he talked about um, how Ryan's business partner left when Aperture bought them out. That had passed me by. I didn't realize that. I didn't know. And also, apparently, um, Neptune is moving from uh, California to Pennsylvania, which is bloody miles. That Pennsylvania is where Ecotech is as well. Correct, which is which is why they're doing it. But apparently, yeah. and, and California is the other side of the country. That had passed me by. <laughs> so there's stuff like that that I'm sure I'd seen it somewhere maybe, but because we're in the UK, we don't we don't pay any attention to it. So, um, but there's some interesting stuff on that. And um, uh, if you like reefing podcasts, there is another one available. So go and check it out. Plus, plus they had some very kind words to say about us. <laughs> I was embarrassed. He was so nice about that. Thank you for that. I, it was. I was I I've, it, I've, I've basically, I've taken the clip. I've repeated it over and over again, and I play it yeah. to myself as I go to bed. I had to sleep. <laughs> so the, the, he said some stuff before that again, not just about the podcast, but about me. That was far too kind with his praise. But Definitely. that was. That was yeah, exactly. It wasn't. But let's put it this way: it wasn't justified. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was really nice, actually. But anyways, this is so a risk of this becoming uh, a stroke fest. Uh, Kalamazoo Reefer, uh, we the Reefers is the name of the podcast. So it's good. Go and check it out. And he's here. We go. He's in the he's in the chat. So you got to stop being nice to me, though, Kalamazoo. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to get embarrassed. Yeah, you've got, um, you have to be. You have to be nasty. Otherwise, it gets. He'll get used to it. Be nasty to Ryan. No, never be. I'm very fragile. Okay, <laughs> uh, so that's a new podcast. Uh, and second piece of news, the Red Sea Reef Can uh, that we mentioned last week, the world's most expensive uh, plastic container. Yeah. It's $100, I think, is available at the end of March. It's $100? I hundred didn't know that. $100? There, there, there two. There's one is 100 and one's 70. Was it pounds or dollars? can't remember, but very expensive. Wow. I'd still buy one, but that's I, I spoke to someone in a shop the other day, and they were like, that's a lot of money for a plastic tub <laughs> i did not know that that is a lot. Week. <laughs> i don't listen do i i know but yeah it's a lot of money for a plastic container yeah but it's available at the end of march but i saw it does the... have a picture of a coral on it so it does yeah it's a very sophisticated uh container but it is True. just a container but there, there were comments on on their on one of their videos it's available end of march most markets from the sounds of it uh what else? Uh, oh, Vibrant update. I know you love Vibrant, right? I saw um, what Telegram put out. I, I, he put oh, out I didn't a, see what he put, actually. He put, he put a picture of the old label and the new one, and then he just wrote something underneath that was just, like, smug. It wasn't smug. Like, I can't remember what it was. But... He's calling you smug, Jim. No, no. no. <laughs> what did he say? No, I don't think smug Vibrant. was the right term. He says, meh, the misinformation shared in this hobby by manufacturers and danglers is ridiculous. It, and I think he's basically going, look at what look at what they told us and then look at what actually ha is real because they've they've updated the packaging. Yeah. So this this photo is from is from Reef to Reef. So they they yeah. post, I'll share the photo so you can see it. This is the, the the new label and the old label. Old label on the left, new label on the right. Old label basically says it's amazing. 95%, this is the, the thing with it, 95% bacteria, it lists as the ingredients, 1% yeah. amino acids, half a percent vinegar, 3.5% other. That has now changed to 96.5% other <laughs> and 3%, I can't even read that, like uh, phen phenylomethylene, dimethylene, basically it's it's got all these all these warnings on it now they've been told to do this by the yeah, way yeah. by the, whoever it was caution keep out of reach of children uh all that's, first what, day that's, stuff that's like. what i noticed it's like yeah. that was if you think about it that's dangerous they they didn't have the warning labels on it that they must legally be required to have well, they are now and there's a little epa registration environmental protection agency registration number yeah and the, but the, it, what bothers me is that they've still be. I've not seen anything from them talking about this. Yeah. So they've just. Well, I, of course, I, of course not. <laughs> but I, the hobby we know about it, guys. You know, so talk. You've got to talk about this. You've got to explain yourselves. And they did say before our lawyers have advised us to be quiet or something like that. But it's like, come on, you got to say something. And I personally wouldn't. They're still selling it, obviously, and now they, they're labeling it properly. There's no way I'd buy that for a start. I think it's basically the same as API Algae Fix, which is a tenth of the price. So you just buy that instead. But how can you trust a company like that when they've done all of this? Especially it's been years and they've not said a thing. If you think about it, it really was just a lie. 
Yeah. Like it, it was, it was like, it must be illegal. It must be. Yeah. I don't know if they got fined. The only thing with it is they partnered with a company to make it. So it's not impossible that underwater creatures, which is the company didn't know what was in it. But uh, frankly, if you're going to sell it, they did. Can't... It was vinegar and 95% fairy yeah. dust. <laughs> if you're going to sell it, you can't just sell it and be like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to know what's in it. You've got to, do, you've got to take responsibility. So if yeah. it wasn't a lie, it was ne the next worst thing. So, yeah. yeah, don't buy Vibrant, guys. Oh, you can't say that. I just did. <laughs> That's so. so bad. You can buy Vibrant if you want, but how, how could you trust a company like that? It's just... it's Because that it wasn't that the ingredients weren't put on there. That's it was that they it was blatantly they pretended alive. it was bacteria. It was like, oh, it's yeah. bacteria because we're all like, oh, bacteria is good, it's all natural. And they were yeah. like, we'll tell people it's bacteria when it's actually an algae side. It's like, yeah, but they've got to come out and see. Until I saw that picture, that's your side of the story. Come on, until I saw that picture that the Telegram posted, I, yeah. I, I didn't really feel anything about it. I was just like, eh. I used it once, it was all right, it yeah. didn't, it didn't. Like it had an effect, but it didn't completely eradicate what I wanted. But then when I saw all the, like the warning labels, that was when I went, actually, this really, really is bad. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it really, it was actually dangerous. Bad. I always wondered why you you never saw it as a big deal because <laughs> you I always didn't like, care. Like I yeah, used yeah, it once, didn't, like it didn't kill anything. <laughs> yeah. But it was more of the fact that when I actually saw it, and I went, like people could have actually been injured by this. Like, 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 I mean, if your kid's going to go pick up a bottle of bacteria, <laughs> you, <Yeah>. then, <laughs> survival of the fittest. But, um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's not good, basically. No, but they just, I just wish they'd come out and, uh, and give guys, give your side of the story, talk about it. Stop uh, being quiet. Talk about it. Come on. Yeah. Not good enough. Anyway. Um, so that's vibrant update. You can go and check it out. And there's the reef to reef thread about it. I can't remember what the thread is called, but it's on there. It's on there somewhere. Um, if you want more detail, there's lots of stuff on there that I don't understand and all the details. But anyway, so that's a vibrant update. And now we have uh, Reefstock Denver has there's um saltwateraquarium.com is hang on a second. I'm still here. Uh saltwateraquarium.com is out there. Mark, uh, what's his face? Mr. Saltwater Tank, Mark Callahan. Yeah, yeah. he's covering all the stuff there, and he's he's unveiled a few new products interesting because i haven't seen anything oh. new or exciting for ages so am well, i about to be excited it's not that new and it's okay. not that exciting okay <laughs> but i you know we, uh, everybody knows that here I feel on like you've built this up too much <laughs> I know, here on the prestige reef dog show the one thing that we think is missing for most equipment is some kind of bluetooth or wi-fi basically contactless Contact it exactly. So you put something like that on, a, on an existing piece of equipment, and we will love it. So, for example, CJ made a contactless heater, and we loved it. Well, I've got good news for you. Eheim have made a Wi-Fi heater. Nice. Actually, that makes that actually makes more sense. It does. <laughs> so the thing is, though, this was it was announced as being new. Oh, I don't know if it was announced as being new, but it was at Reefstock, and they were presenting it like it was new. And yeah. this is already in the shops. It's available. You can get it delivered on Tuesday. In the UK, and we're norm we're not normally further, although it's a European company. But anyway, that wasn't a yawn about the heat. I was just I, but <laughs> no, no, no. What, what but, I was actually thinking is, I suppose it doesn't actually matter. No, I was thinking that heaters should have cages around them because it's like a basic requirement. But not everyone needs to have a cage because the heaters aren't in the tanks. I, I'm no, only because no. I bought heaters with cages for quarantine tanks, but they're not as easy to find as the ones without cages. I still think it's better to have a cage because I've I have a rock in my sump and I've dropped rock before. Yeah, and if you drop it on a, a, a heater, you're in trouble. But so yeah, I, I think I would rather have it, but it's probably not necessary. But I'll tell you a little bit about it because it's not quite what you think. So it's a Wi-Fi heater. Yeah, uh, you can't adjust the heat in, in a traditional way with a dial. It has to be by Wi-Fi. But yeah. Eheim is Eheim is known for reliability. Basically, if you put it's a German company, so excuse the cliche, but German stuff is well made, right? And Eheim in particular has a really good reputation for that. They make simple stuff and they make it really well. This is, I think, this is actually moves away from that a little bit because adding Wi-Fi makes it more complicated than it needs to be. But anyway, um, the Wi-Fi, the way it works, it doesn't have an app. So yeah. It's a web browser-based Wi-Fi. Um, and you can adjust the temperature from anywhere in the world as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. 
don't know if you'd ever want to do that, but you know, whatever. Uh, and it does say it did say that it will send you alerts if the temperature gets too high or too low. But because Anywhere it's in the world, does that include my sofa? Because <laughs> then yes. it would be useful. <laughs> exactly, and well, that's when you that's when you use it. Yeah. But it do, it says it will send you alerts if the temperature is too high or too low, which sounds good on the face of it. But it's web browser based, so I think that means you would have to log into the web browser to get the alert, and that's that's not an alert then, is it? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, but I kind of I don't I don't hate that. I think I'd rather, I, that feels like it's more complicated than it needs to be. And I'd rather just have a heater that I plug into a, an aquarium controller. But there you go. I have um, a fluval heater and it's the one with the cage and it's got this little dial thing on top for you to, I like, I don't know how it works. I, I literally, I'm like, what happened to the old fashioned one with a dial that you just yeah. pointed it at what you wanted? Oh, I think I know the one with a, it's a little digital display. Yes. And sometimes, that. like sometimes yeah. it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And and I'm like, how do I set what yeah. I want it to be and everything? Yeah. To be fair, I um I have one of those, and it is a bit is a bit temperamental. But um, it's it's got a little dial that you a little yes. stick yeah. that you push to one side. But anyway, so this this Eheim one, I don't hate that. To be fair, the only thing I'm not a massive fan of is it's for the the 150 watt one is 52 quid, and the the 150 watt normal one is 34 quid. So it's quite a lot more money. It's only 20 quid, I suppose, but it's like almost double the price. Yeah. And I don't think that's necessary. But hey, I don't hate it. Eheim, though, apparently have got, they've had a bulk delivery of Wi Fi chips because they've not stopped they everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They have. Um, and they the next thing they've got is a Wi Fi UV steriliser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that face I pulled when I saw that. Where um, is this going? <laughs> like, so this is, what does this, it do? So I have one of these UV sterilizers. This is it. And I have that, the standard one. It's yeah. really good. It's Again, what Eheim do well is they make stuff, they make it well. It works. Very functional. They, 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 just, they just work. And that's why I like the Eheim stuff. Uh, but this is this has got a Wi-Fi thing. And the Wi-Fi thing with this, it's got some things that were quite clever. But and the only thing really that I think was worthwhile is it has it put you can set a timer for the bulb when the bulb is on and off, yeah. And that I actually do think is worthwhile because otherwise you've got to put a plug timer on. And plug time, I hate plug timers, don't you just always have it on? Uh, you, uh so you can have it 24 7. Some people have it on overnight, some people you might have it on for if you have it on 12 hours a day, for example, it'll double the, 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 the life of the, the tube, the UV tube bulb. Yeah, it will half do what it's meant to do. <laughs> yeah, but some people okay. If you just have it twenty four seven, then that's that's. Way yeah, mine. I've always run them twenty four seven. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've I've run it um, on and off before, but um, uh, it, so I don't know how much more expensive it is. I'm trying to find it now. Actually, uh, how much is this? This is the this is twelve hundred litre Eheim UV sterilizer. Let me see if I can find the normal one, the Reflex. See how much? Oh, I think it's. Hang on, this is the eleven watt one is one hundred and sixty five, and what's how many watts is this? Talk amongst yourself, guys. I know this is great. Put a smile on your face as you're comparing the prices of two <laughs> of two things. Like I'm like, why? Did, why are you so excited about this? I can't. I can't find a comparison. But it looks like it's quite a lot more expensive. Um, I think there's some value in that, to be fair. But um, I would probably prefer the the standard one. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think that's about as useful as um, the contactless heater. Yeah. Not the the one thing I would say, <laughs> look at this. It's got a little blue light on the power supply. Nice. The standard one doesn't have that. You really are like clutching your straws, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a, it's now got a built-in Wi-Fi time on that. It did, I think it said you could boost it as well. So you can boost the intensity of the bulb for a short period. Um Again, no. again, what 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 purpose is that? Well, it, it's more intense, but I don't know how long you could boost it for. But anyway, whatever. It doesn't. I didn't. That didn't strike me as something that was amazing. A a big and this again. This felt like they'd had a ba a bulk load of Wi Fi chips, and they're like, <laughs> Dave, mate, we've we've ordered too many. What should we do with them? I'm like, oh, put them in the UV sterilizer. <laughs> I just wonder if we have had. There was a, the two twenty. 18 was the golden age of new stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. when the roller mats came out, the Red Sea stuff came out, like the reef bot came out. They was that was the golden age of we have not seen anything like that innovation for a long time, as far as I'm concerned. We've had other products, like different branded versions of the same thing. Yeah. 
but then what again what is there to make no <laughs> like, oh well but you would have said that before the the roller mat came out and now everyone loves them yeah there was so um the, on the uh, the we the reefers podcast Kalamazoo Reef had some interesting points on ecotech and how they affect um that particular point i won't talk about it but if you want to know more go and check out the podcast after you've listened to this podcast <laughs> um more wi-fi chips ryan at eheim okay uh, i know you're excited by what we had so far yeah very uh, they have a they brought out a, a ph controller for um, calcium reactors this is getting worse <laughs> i mean that's that's you know okay that's that's fine it's, it's good to have a, a, P, a ph controller uh, but it's also wi-fi of course <laughs> nice and it said uh it's um uh, it's got a pH probe and a solenoid for a calcium reactor, and it alerts you if your pH goes too high or too low. Um, but again, this is browser based, so I don't think it. Um, I don't think those alerts will do anything unless you log onto the browser. So a bit weird. But it, I guess it will be cheaper because it doesn't have an app. But the final thing is, and this is again, this is more Wi-Fi stuff from Eheim. <laughs> and this actually, I don't think this is new. They mentioned it. That e Eheim do an auto feeder. You know the the single yes. auto feeder, really good. Again, this might actually be worth having as Wi-Fi. So let's see what this does. Um, so the, again, the the standard Eheim auto feeder. I used to have one. I don't anymore. It was my yeah. go-to one because it's really simple. It's clockwork. A couple of batteries that last forever, and it yeah. just does what it needs. The only problem I had with it, it was it dispensed too many pellets. I could never get yeah. it to dispense the right amount. But they brought out a Wi-Fi version, and this this has been around for a while though at least yeah. six months. Um, but the one thing I thought was clever with this is it's got a scale built into it, so it will notify you when it's running out, not just, yeah. not just a guess. Yeah. I mean, but again, <laughs> it's browser-based, so I, do you, does that mean you... It might, I might be wrong about this, but I think you have to log on to the browser to get those notifications, which is... Anyway. JJ says you put your email in, and then you get the alerts. Oh, ah, that's clever. Thank you, JJ. Uh, yeah, okay, that's better. I mean, do you want to... I don't know if I want an alert by email, but okay, fair enough. There you yeah, go. But for things that are not uh, like your heater, you might need to know that immediately. Yeah. Um, but your for, you, for change your bulb on your UV sterilizer or um, top up your. I actually think the food one. That's the sort of thing you put on, and you'll leave it for three months, and you'll forget how much food, and then and it will just run out one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Because <laughs> it's out of the way. It's normally quite high up, isn't it? But, yeah. yeah. Okay, but again, I don't hate any of this. But that um, that again is is browser based. I have the um, the refactory uh, auto feeder, and that is actually really good. But I've only I never use it because I feed frozen. But on the new tank, yeah. I might feed um, uh, pellets. This is much bigger. No, no, you just feed pellets. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're you're an, you are known for having phosphate issues. You are about to have a whole lot more phosphate issues yeah, <laughs> if you well, start feeding pellets. That's a possibility. I, I, I'll test it now. Anyway, I've got an, I've got a robot to test it for me. So. Great. <laughs> but that is uh, there's so there's a, there's an Eheim auto feeder and it's a Wi-Fi version, ninety three quid, and I think the um the the standard non Wi-Fi one is half that, and you can normally get it discounted on Amazon for like thirty quid. Um, so I'm not sure that's I'd I'd rather have the standard one. It's this has got some better functionality. It's easier to set up, but I don't, I think I'd rather save the money, spend the money on corals. I had all these crazy ideas when I first set up the farm about mm -hmm. what I wanted. And I wanted to have one of those on every single tank. <laughs> and then I decided against it. <laughs> you do like automating stuff, don't you? I do like automating stuff. And it would have it would have made like, well, I felt the one thing that it forced, I have to go and check the corals, obviously, when I feed the fish. Um, but I was going to have one of those on every single tank. But then but it would have been a terrible idea. Firstly, I would need 10 of them or eight of them. So yeah. that's, that's a lot of money. Secondly, it's very humid in there. So they all would have been blocked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I also don't like, because if you've got a cover on your, your tank, on all tanks, yeah. and I find that the, the pellets, half the pellets settle on the cover <laughs> and then uh, it gets dirty. And yeah. yeah, it wouldn't have worked anyway, because I, di I didn't have a cover at that point. So they would have been on the edge. But then once I got the cover, I wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have fit on the edge anymore, would it? No. Okay. Yeah. 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 You have to rest it somewhere else. But... Yeah. And I've yeah, also, I knocked one in once as well. Actually, I knocked one in multiple times. I did that. Yeah, I, I, it, it broke. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately, they can't yeah. swim. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, fortunately, I, I was there when I saw it. And so I, I fished it out straight away, but it died straight immediately. <laughs> yeah. But they're very good. The standard Eheim feeder, the single yeah. feeder, I think, is one of the best ones out there. 
It's just it dispenses too much. But anyway. Uh, and there was someone that said also uh, app functionality can be added later. It says Tej, Teju Tej TJ. Uh, so there you go. Um, but we, I've tortured Ryan enough with um, tortured me. <laughs> with yes. Wi-Fi chips. So we're going to wrap the news up on that point. Someone said, did the maid come around today? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Did, did the maid come around today? <laughs> uh, no, no. I I said I didn't. I think I slept about two hours last night. So I'm. I oh, didn't. Really? I actually didn't realize I'd be this tired during it. And it, the tiredness hit me about fifteen minutes in. Yeah, actually, That's it was about fun. half an hour. It was after I, I, I talk, stopped talking. <laughs> I yawn half the time anyway. Yeah. Uh, even when I'm not that tired. Uh, and Trevor Trevor makes a good point. Trevor Hillier, hopefully now that every aquarium product under the sun has Wi-Fi built in, we'll start to see some real product innovation. <laughs> True. <laughs> Literally everything is now Wi-Fi. Uh, check your comments from the video, you. Um, that is a mysterious comment. I don't know what it's about. It must be on my the maid, the maid. Oh yeah, you must. Anyway, we'll, we'll check it out later. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to later. Uh, made about reef dogs fish. Uh, I don't remember. We'll we'll check. We're checking on that later. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you for sitting through half an hour of Wi-Fi updates, Ryan. Thank you. I appreciate yes. it, and uh, thank you for joining. Everybody, now you can go and buy cars from prestigereef.co.uk. Thank, Thank you. you all for joining, and we will catch oh, you. Also, about Etsy, remember? Etsy.co.uk. Uh, Com. Com. <laughs> I never get it right. Oh, <laughs> There's all these customers waiting at reef.etsy.co.uk, and they're going, they're going, they're yeah. going, where's the stuff? Where's the yeah, stuff? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, oh no, I've just had a notification from Etsy, but it's not so. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching, guys. Catch you all next week. Right. See you later. Bye.